But for AM, it is time to put it together for four quarters. That's what I'm ready to see, especially against an inferior opponent. Not just one quarter, not just the fourth quarter, not just the third quarter coming out of the half and getting a pick. I, I want to see it from beginning to end. Dominate. I want an offense that moves the ball for 60 minutes, that can run the ball between the trenches, around the edges. I want to see a defense that does what they do. Um, no, no complaints about the defense, but one that preys on the Lobos all day long. And with that, we begin the go hour. With my good buddy, Olin Buchanan. Good morning to you, OB. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I like Albuquerque. You do? I'm, I, you know, I don't care that the game's not in Albuquerque, but I, I like Albuquerque. You wouldn't have mind going there. Yeah, I've been there a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Weren't they supposed to play there? Or is that uh, they were supposed to play New Mexico a couple years ago? Am I wrong about that? Well, or? I remember they did play New Mexico a couple years ago, okay. and Nick Starkle threw for about 500 yards. Okay. But that was here, of course. That was here. Okay. Now, I don't think I would. I can't imagine A and M. Say so, yeah, sure, we'll go there with yeah. five people. Now they did go to Wyoming before, right? But uh, I don't know. I, but yeah, I, I, just uh, it's great basketball yeah. venue there, and and a, a rabid fan base. But I don't know how much they get into football, so it's typically not very good. So we, I is this the Francione Bowl? Yes, it is the Francione Bowl. So I am not the nicest of people, as you know. You've gotten to know me. We had a guest on the other day, and I just laughed because the um, it was a, an insider from New Mexico, and even if th- this is what the uh, reporter said, even if they're down a hundred to zero in the first quarter, I just want them to not give up. And I'm thinking to myself, if you're down a hundred to zero in the first quarter, you're dead, baby. You're done. Yeah, you know, um, not give up. Come on now. Um, back in my in my first job. In Longview, Texas, I had just the hard-ass sports editor, old-time guy. Yeah. And if he ever heard me say, you know, I just want him to show character, and I, he would have fired me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but things have changed. Sure. Things have changed. Sure. So you heard my lead, and I just want to see good football, not in stretches. I want to see it for four quarters. I want to see a team, and that doesn't mean they have to outscore New Mexico by 50. I'm not saying I want to see a team – where we're not having as many like, man, are they going to turn it on? Are they going to turn it on now? When, when, when are they going to turn it on? I want to see it first drive, second drive, third drive, to where we can see Zach kind of comfortable in the pocket, making some throws, not overthrowing uh, wide open receivers. I just want to see comfort. I want to see smash mouth football from beginning to end for 60 minutes. Yeah, I, I with you, what I want to see from Zach is you just said it. I want to see him. If he's got a guy open, just put the ball on him, not overthrowing. Because I can – look, we don't know this for a fact, but I think I think he came in last week just over-emotional, over-hyped, sure. over-whatever. And, you know, you're throwing too hard, you're throwing, you're throwing high. And I, I know it's New Mexico. I mentioned Nick Starkle lit him up a few years ago. I want to see a guy that's just under control – to where when he has an open receiver, he makes a good throw to him. Um, and if he does that, then I'm thinking, okay, maybe it was a situation there in those first three quarters that he was just ha- having to get control of his emotions. Sure. And if he's in control of his emotions and shows that w- when he is under control, he can make those plays, the routine plays, then I'm going to feel more optimistic about the season moving forward. Yeah, I just I just want to see it. And look, he may be a little amped up at Kyle Field getting his first start. Like I, I understand that even if it's against New Mexico, but let me feel comfortable on all layers. Uh, the running game, I want to see it get going again. Right? We just didn't see it. Now you you brought up a post out there on the message boards that to discuss sometimes uh, holes being open and just not going to the right hole. I right. want to see that hole attacked. I want to see establish the running game. And honestly. I think you can do all this without putting too much on film for the Arkansas game. I think you're just that much better from a talent perspective, line up, old-fashioned football, call it a day. Yeah, I do still think that A&M is going to be physically more talented than ten, nine or ten of the teams on the schedule. Just They have more talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you got to execute. And that they had more talent last week. They just didn't execute till the fourth quarter. Yeah. So yeah, I want to see them just go out, use that talent, and execute. 
execute, go after them. Now, uh, four quarters of football, because really, if you look at the eight quarters they have played this year, Kent State, they looked good in the first half of the first quarter, right? Roughly, mm-hmm. they looked pretty good. Then they turned it off in the second quarter, turned it on again in the third quarter, right? Against Colorado, and I'm not talking defense. Defense has been elite for the most part every quarter. Yeah, they, they struggled a little bit giving up some rushing yards against Kent State and a little bit early on against Colorado. But offensively, it was one quarter there. I want to see more than one quarter a game. I think that's that, that for a team that should be having, you know, playoff aspirations, college football playoff aspirations. I want to see it for more, and I don't care who the opponent is. Yeah, yeah, um, and you know, quite for hey, after this game, you're a third, you're you're a quarter of the way through the season, um, and by the time you get to midseason, which will be the Alabama game, you know, then there's no more excuses. Right. Yeah. Then by my midseason, you should know what you're doing, and uh, you should kind of idea who you are. So it's uh, it's time to start developing that identity and, and showing who you are. Will we know who they are by the end of next week? So that'll be four games. Yeah. And against an SEC opponent. Yeah, I don't know if you'll know exactly, who, but you're going to have a really good idea. I think we knew after three games last year who A&M was because we said, okay, they're going to be a power running team with a lot of – with good defense and, and, and a lot of play action, right, because of what they did in the second half against Florida. And that was what they were going to do moving on. I think they played New Mexico – I mean, uh, uh, Mississippi State next mm-hmm. and pretty much had the same plan uh, and, and, and leaned on that the rest of the year. So, yeah, maybe you will. Yeah, I hope. I mean, it's – at this point, I feel like you need to start flexing who you are. All right, if you want to get in on the show, you can, 979-693-1150. That is our uh, BCSI hotline. You can also text the show, 979-693-1150, the A and B text line. I have a topic for us to uh, kind of discuss more for the message boards and, and also the text line. How many rushing yards and passing yards are the Aggies going to go for versus New Mexico? Me- New Mexico, excuse me. We're going to kind of talk about that because in my mind, I'm, I'm aiming high again. I aimed high against Colorado. We both aimed high against Kent State. Like, hey, yo, you know, maybe Spiller goes for 200 and, and A-Chain goes for 120. Not quite how <laughs> Not it turned quite. out, but at least uh, our head's in the right place. So we'll, we'll discuss that. Let's go around the room and say hello to the friends. We go to uh, Dalton Hughes in the back. Hello, Dalton. Good morning. Uh, OB, you mentioned Starkle had a nice passing day the last time AM played New Mexico. About 500 and something yards, wasn't it? it uh, 416, 416. But do you remember what that game had the final one of somebody's career, I believe? The final one of somebody's career. The final punt return for touchdown from one Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk. He took one, he only touched one punt and it went 90 yards to the house. By the way, he's good in the NFL. What a phenomenal player. That's a perfect I miss example. Christ, I miss watching Christian Kirk return punts. Um, I'll say that. <laughs> What was that he used to always say in the uh, press conference? I can't remember. He had a, a – I can't remember. It was what before it was. my time, but I think it – wasn't it something like I just need one block? No, something? no, no. I mean, he would always say like uh, – ah, I have to think about it. Uh, but that's a perfect example of a first-round talent that was not a first-round pick. There you go. Exactly. First-round talent, not a first-round pick. By the way, Ricky Seals Jones, you see that touchdown he caught yesterday? Yeah, I hate it that, you know, who he's playing for, but right. uh, but happy for him. What a play. Always liked him. I did too. I, I got to know him in high school, obviously, what he did here at a and Just a good kid. <laughs> Remember he got arrested one time for uh, for using profanity. And I was like, wait, wait, you can get arrested for profanity? I should be on death row. Uh, sometimes this studio <laughs> could be without a doubt. Let's, let's go to the news and social center, Tomas Romo is over there getting us updated with all the headlines. What's up, Tomas? What's going on, guys? How y'all doing? Good. Good. First thing, Texas A&M Volleyball set for matchup with number one Texas tonight. Friday night's rivalry game will be the 94th time Texas A&M and UT have men the sport of volleyball with the Aggies recording 23 victories in the all-time series. A&M has earned 13 of their 23 wins at home with the Aggies' last win against the Longhorns coming in Reed Arena in 2010 when Texas was the number eight team in the nation. Yeah, we had Bird and Lauren Davis in studio yesterday looking forward to that game. And, yeah, they they know when Texas is up what it means. It's not just a football thing for those volleyball girls are, are pumped about it. What else you got, Delmas? Mo named finalist for 91st AAU James E. Sullivan Award. A thing Mo, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, garnered four NCAA first-team All-American honors, winning three NCAA event titles and three SEC titles. 
Excellent. That should be a no-brainer. In yeah. my By the way, I need to keep up with that uh, A&M volleyball team on social media. Does Bird tweet? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. have to look for that. Yeah, yeah. She uh, she brings that, it. That, that tweeting bird. Oh, and, and Christian <laughs> Kirk. Christian Kirk. You got the, it, you got it the was quote? What not? He would say, so and so, and whatnot, and whatnot. That was must have been his favorite phrase or favorite and whatnot. whatnot. Shoo. Sorry. I'm just, uh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm channeling my inner Anaya Smith. All right, guys. So let's do this. We, uh, we're going to come back here in a moment and we're going to break down uh, all things. We're going to go through our pick six. We're going to continue talking about four quarters of football. And let me just set the scene for the rest of the show because we got a, a fun show. Nine o'clock hour, obviously, Billy Lucci is in here. At 9 35, Alyssa Lang, SEC Network. On the show, we'll chat with her. She is, uh, I don't want to say she became famous for this. She's a very good broadcaster, but she was one, I think, one of the first to eat the banana the way the Kentucky quarterback did with the peel <laughs> on, on camera. Have you ever done that? Uh, eat a banana? With the peel. No, no. Oh. No, no I, 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 I peel my banana yeah, I've, and then no, I eat it. And if my banana has any kind of bruising on it, I am out. Don't no. eat that banana. I don't want a bruised banana. My, I, I, do not want to eat a bruised banana. Hot key. All right, guys. When we come back here on Tex Ags Radio, we're going to go through our pick six here on the like program. banana splits. Those are good. Yeah. It's Tex Ags Radio. You never eat ice cream. You're listening to The Zone. The Zone. Aggie Land's All Sports, All Sports Station. Station. If you have a debit card, you're used to spending money. But what if your card actually ended up earning you money? That's not exactly normal, but that's what you can get at A&B. It's called Kasasa Cashback Checking. Don't mind the weird name. What you need to know is that it's a free account with cash rewards. Use your debit card for everyday purchases, and we'll pay you cash back every month. If that doesn't sound like normal banking, well, guess what? We're not a normal bank. So contact a and today and ask for Kasasa or visit a and Equal housing lender, member FDIC. We have trucks. Yes, at Tom White Chevrolet, we have the cars, trucks, and SUVs you want today. New, used, and certified pre-owned. We have more stock coming in daily, and we won't be beat on price. And if you need quick cash, we are buying cars even if you don't buy from us. All roads lead to Tom White Chevrolet and Bryan College Station. Chevy, buy new roads. More details at TomWhite.com. Tom White Chevrolet. Brian Broadcasting is your home for high school football. Brian High, A&M Consolidated, Rudder, and College Station High play on the Brian Broadcasting family of stations. No matter where you are, hear every play, every game, all season long. Thanks to Prosperity Bank, Kelly Burt Dozer, Zwerneman Flooring, and BCS Toyota. To find out when and where to hear your favorite team, go to BrazosFootball.com. He was the heart of your family, and he taught you our history. He helped you fix your first flat. He was the best backyard DJ around. And every time he'd tell a story, he'd own the room. But now more than ever, he may feel alone. Today, older adults and their loved ones are struggling to connect in a time when connection has never been more important. But there is something we can do. Embrace our older loved ones through StoryCorps Connect. With StoryCorps Connect, you can honor seniors remotely with an interview about their life. Every interview will be archived at the Library of Congress, becoming part of American history so that years from now, future generations can listen in. All right, Grandpa, what's one piece of advice you have for me? Just three words, sweetheart. Live with courage. The man that had the best stories still has plenty of stories to tell. So connect virtually and share the conversation of a lifetime at storycorpconnect.org slash AARP. Connect, honor, share. StoryCorps Connect. A message from AARP, StoryCorps, and the Ad Council. Game day on the zone starts three hours before kickoff with the Twin Peaks pregame show, and it's powered by TexAgs.com. Game day on the zone is brought to you in part by Gage Gandy Bail Bonds, Bobcat of the Brazos Valley, Tradition Mobile One Lube, and Frontier Communications. After listening into the pregame show, you can hear every Aggie football game, home road national championship, right here on Sports Radio 1150 and 93.7 FM. Hi, guys. It is Tex Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. That was for Richard Zane. 
here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. We're going to be hanging out at Rollo real soon. Got some good news coming out there. Uh, get to hang out with uh, Jason and Keith yesterday for a couple hours. We're actually about an hour. It was fun. Uh, Rollo Insurance, independent insurance company built around ed- educating you on exactly what you're paying for, doing the shopping for you so that you can accomplish all of your insurance goals. Their headquarters is on Highway 6 right here in College Station. You can call 888 rollo or go to rolloinsurance.com. All right, hey, by the way, we hit the 6,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, which means we are going to do an extended YouTube edition today. I don't wow. even know if I'm allowed to announce it, but I'm going to do it. I'm a rule breaker. We're doing all three hours on YouTube today because the final countdown with uh, the McKinney brothers and Luch or is, is you, you're an outlaw dude you know what i do you're tony montana of tex eggs i try to be it's more of an act but i will say this you really before the show you really enjoyed seeing the, the my not my temper but like the when i get going you yeah, like that side of yes yeah, somebody had, i'm not going to get into it but somebody had had made uh david upset yeah and he was he was expressing that ups, that that anger yeah. and i'm like yeah i'm into it yeah yeah, yeah i like that yeah i just don't upset me. You're probably going to beat me in something, but regardless, don't upset me because I do a good act on the air. No, actually, it's 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 legit. No, it was it was it was good. I'm like, yeah, I, I dig that, man. When if if you're going to be angry, be angry all the way. Yeah, I'm all in. I, I, don't be passive aggressive. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of angry. Yeah, I'm not going to talk to him. No, I'm going to say something. Tell me when so I can be there to watch. By the way, <laughs> we're going to get into some football this segment. I promise. I jogged a little bit yesterday. Old man hamstring coming back, baby. Hamstring's feeling good. Those over 60 soccer guys that I'm going to take on this weekend, I, I might be there. I'm just making an announcement. I may be on one leg, kind of hobbly, but I, I, I'm trending towards playing. Over 60? I'm hoping they're over 60. I'm, oh. If I'm going to be hurt. with, I, would, I, would you push down a guy that's yeah, over 60? 100%. Okay. I'm, if you're on the field, I, yeah. I don't care if, yeah, if you're you, a child. You came out, you yeah. came out there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, if I'm out there, you're going to... This is the world we play in, Division Five soccer, for the worst in the world. I'm going to show you that I'm a little better than the worst in the world. All right. Well, like I said, I dig it, man. If you're going to go out there, be, if you're going to be angry, be angry. If you're going to go compete, compete. And I'll also say this, OB, since I'm over here using you as a therapist. I am feeling – I got eight hours of sleep last night. I feel like I have a little more energy this yeah. morning. I, I was a walking zombie yesterday, I have to admit. So I, I slept a lot, so I felt better. But just to make sure, I, you know, I start my morning off with a bang. Yeah. So I, you know, gotta get that while, sponsor. It's been a while since I've had a bang. <laughs> so I started one off with a bang today, and I'm feeling good. Bang bang. Let's get into our <sighs> pick six as you're knocking out that bang there. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, home game that we're going to be at. Okay. New Mexico two and zero. They're undefeated. Ob versus. Number five, Texas A&M. That is an 11 a.m. kickoff here at Kyle Field. SEC Network. The uh, points that I have here is A&M favored by 28 and a half. Yeah, I'm taking A&M all day long. You know, I, I know I missed them last week. I think that uh, – but, but I didn't know that they were going to lose their quarterback. And yep. I think that you're going to see a team that's – with a quarterback that's settled down, that's going to be able to run the ball, that's going to be able to do what they want. And I think a and is going to win. I'm telling you guys – Go bet the farm. Give, uh, take A&M and give the points. The farm. We're the betting farm. the farm. Okay. The farm. Here, here's my deal. The ranch. Somebody called me out for drinking the maroon Kool-Aid because I keep thinking A&M is going to des- destroy teams. I maintain that I thought A&M was going to destroy Colorado last week. And the reason I thought last week they were going to was because I thought they'd score on their first two or three drives. And Colorado didn't have the offense to catch up. And at that point, you run the ball. The game's over. You're going to win significantly. I was wrong. I didn't know that the quarterback was going to get injured in Haynes King. I still think, even though 28 and a half is a high number, I still think A&M is going to go over and destroy New Mexico. And I'm hoping it is over at halftime. I, and I believe that I will be riding a lot of my column at halftime. That'd be great. Get out yes, of there early. Yeah. yeah. Love that. All right, number two. We've got number one, Alabama, 2-0. At number 11, Florida, 2-0 and as well. 2.30 start at the Swamp. CBS is the coverage. Bama favored by 15 and a half. You know, Florida seems to have a way to play Alabama They close. do. It's kind of like the Arkansas A&M series a yeah. lot of times, closer than I mean, it should the, be. Even the championship game last year. Yep. I'm going to take Alabama. Get the points. <laughs> I am too. They, they, they have played very last year. You know, it was closer than people expected. But the quarterback situation at Florida – 
does strike me as odd there. Usually Dan Mullen's ready to roll. Anthony Richardson, Emory Jones, they just haven't figured it out. There. I wouldn't bet, bet the farm on this one. No, no, but I'm going I'm going Alabama over. It's Alabama. Mullen has a way of finding – he's a good coach. He's kind of a squirrel, but he's a, you haven't heard that phrase in a long time, have you, squirrel? No, I have not. Have, have yeah. you ever heard it? Yeah, of course okay, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but he does find a way to keep his teams competitive. So for, for that reason, I'm kind of hesitant, but I'm still going to go with Alabama. Is he one of the names? I think he was maybe more message board chatter of people UCLA would be interested in. Not UCLA, excuse me, USC. Well, if I was USC, I certainly would be. Yeah, I'd, I'd call him. Number three. But do you leave Florida? I wouldn't. But yeah. I mean, unless, you know what, maybe you do because Nick Saban ain't retiring anytime soon. We go to number three. Uh, number 22, Auburn, 2-0. and This is a great game. Yeah. At number 10, Penn State, 2-0. 6.30 o'clock at Beaver Stadium on ABC. Penn State favored by 6.5. I'll take Penn State, and I'll give the points. Okay. You know, have you seen who Auburn's beaten? Nobody. Akron. They beat Akron like 60 to 50 to 7 or something like that. Uh, 10. Um, Akron also lost like 45 to 24 to Temple. And then they beat Alabama State, which is one and one, but their win was in overtime by one point to something called Mills College. Never heard of them. So, you know, anybody that's in the SEC should be, you know, just destroying those those opponents. So uh, Penn State has a win over Wisconsin. Penn State has actually done it against somebody with a pulse. Yep. So I'll take Penn State. I'm actually going to take Auburn. Okay. And the reason being is SEC. No, beyond that, it's more because I believe they're going to be able to run the ball, and I think it's going to be close. I still think Penn State's going to win, but I'm, I'm going to take the under on that one on the six and a half. I think it'll be tight. Okay. Moving on to number four, Nebraska, two and one at number three, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. 11 a.m. at Memorial Stadium, and it is a 22 and a half favorite for OU. Man, I can't. I don't want to keep giving the points, but. I'm going to. I'm. I, I think Oklahoma. I think Nebraska's really bad. So I'm going to take Oklahoma. Now the only thing is that this could be that game with Nebraska. I mean, everything's on this game. Now I don't. They could keep it reasonable, I guess. But I, I'm still going to go with Oklahoma. So let me ask you this. Ask me. If Tulane were to take on Nebraska, who would be favored? Nebraska would be favored. Okay. I'm going with the under, and I, and the reason I believe that is because I. I still think Oklahoma's going to win, but I think Nebraska knows this is their season at right. this point, right? And they're going to make it a closer game, and Oklahoma will still come up. And Oklahoma hasn't shown, just like people said A&M hasn't shown them anything, Oklahoma hasn't shown me anything this year. No. So show me something, and then I'll, I'll – That's a, I don't want to say it's a big number, but it's a big number against Nebraska. But if it was 42-14 Oklahoma, would you be surprised? No, I wouldn't be surprised. Oklahoma, yeah. I mean, they, they can bring it. There's no and, doubt and, about and that. And Nebraska's not good. No. But I, I still think for some reason Nebraska is okay. going to keep this one close. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take OU and probably regret it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm in last place. Just by taking OU makes me want to take a shower. Yeah, that's yeah, Get that dirtiness yeah. off me. By the way, you don't believe Bob Stoops is interested in USC at all, do you? You know, he never would go to the NFL when he had opportunities. Yeah. I kind of believe that he just, well, maybe he misses it. Who knows? Yeah. I don't want to crawl into anybody's mind, but I'd be a little bit surprised. I would be surprised by that as well. Number five, Michigan State at 2-0 and versus, somehow, number 24, Miami, 1-1, 11 a.m., Hard Rock Stadium, ABC broadcast. Miami f- is favored by 6.5. Y'all take the points on that one. Uh, I don't think Miami's very good. I don't know, I'm not saying Michigan State is either, but if I get, if I get points, um, then I'll say, okay, yeah, I mean, these teams are probably, in my mind, somewhat similar, so if I get points, I'll take them. Yeah, I'm taking Michigan State in this one. Okay. I don't I don't think Miami is good at all. And I uh I thought they'd be okay. Last week they just showed me that they're just not very good. And obviously we know what Alabama did, but Alabama does that against everybody. Moving on to the last game, number nineteen, Arizona State, two and zero at number twenty three BYU, nine fifteen start on that one. Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It is on ESPN and Arizona State favored by three and a half. Uh, I'll take BYU in the points. I really like that quarterback at BYU. Not a great passer, but good enough, and he runs really well. Of course, Arizona State has a really a dazzling quarterback, too. Sure. But, you know, I think the better coaching is at BYU. Yep. And probably a more disciplined team uh, just from watching both teams and the way they play. So, 
Uh, could be I could be way barking up way the wrong tree, but I'm going to go with the Cougars of Brigham Young. Yeah, love some Cougars. All right, uh, I'm also taking BYU in this one. Love those Cougars. Yeah, they're good. They're good. They're good. At, they're good at football. They're going to take UH too. <laughs> Not in football this year. No. I'll take Kelvin Sampson though. That's for sure. Yep, he's pretty good. But uh, and by the way, we actually we had a nice. 45 second discussion maybe it was a little bit longer about aggie basketball you're you're excited about what they i mean not not necessarily ncaa tournament excited we'll just do a one minute on this for right now but you're, you're looking forward to the talent that buzz has put together yeah i think they may be better than people think the kid from wyoming was really good in the in the mountain west that doesn't mean he's going to be good in the sec but right. he can shoot and the kid from virginia tech came in he was he's a potential star they got the seven footer from uconn a lot of other guys coming in new and i just think they have more talent than they had last year yeah i i, I agree with that i'm excited to see just how it all comes together and i i think buzz is a heck of a coach and if he gets his kind of players in there they find ways to win games that's that's for sure yeah they, they just got to shoot better and you know we've talked about how they've been among the nation's worst in three-point shooting yep. percentage so upgrade there and you know you may be a lot better than you think. Obi, when we come back, I gave you homework assignment last week. I don't know if you remember. At uh, 835, we're going to do three things you want to see. What are three things you want to see from the Ags this weekend? Uh, I know what I want to see next year, Aggie Park. Yep, that's called a segue, and I'm good at those. <laughs> and actually, I'm actually not that good at them. But that's pretty good. Eh, you know, it's not bad. I want to see what it looks like. I'm, I've, I've read about it. I've talked to the folks there about it. Porter, obviously, Porter Gardner, the president and CEO, he is, uh, showed me his vision. It's going to be great, guys. A little bit of an inconvenience this year during football season as a lot of areas are, are closed off, so we won't be able to see it. But uh, I'm telling you, the vision about, behind it, the game day atmosphere it's going to be, is going to be amazing. And uh, that's because of the Association of Former Students. For over 140 years, they have given gifts to that Aggie network to be here, there, and everywhere. And we know all the places student organizations on campus, over $100,000 there, ROTC um, awards, ROTC departments, you've got the fish drill team. All these uh, dollars are going to somewhere important, and it's not possible without your gifts to the uh, association. For about $100 a year, $9 a month, you get the decal, the plaque, the Texas Aggie, Texas Aggie magazine, plus you're continuing in the oldest, most inspiring tradition of Aggies helping other Aggies. I didn't do it for a couple of years. I was a loser for doing that. Well, I want you guys to join in right now. If you haven't done it, check out AggieNetwork.com and start giving. I'm Tulsi Reber with your community calendar on The Zone. Get a free car seat inspection the morning of Saturday, September 25th at the Brazos Center parking lot. Appointments are required. Find the link on our community calendar at WTAW.com. The Brazos Valley Beekeepers Association invites you to their one-day bee school on Saturday, September 25th. Visit bvbeeks.org for more information. The Brazos Valley African American Museum announces the 500 Giving Campaign to raise funds for a museum director. Be one of the 500 by going online to bvaam.org. The Bryan High Fine Arts Department presents These Shining Lives. Performances run September 23rd through October 2nd. Purchase tickets online at bryanhightheater.ludis.com. Your home for football with the Fightin' Texas Aggies, the Bryan Vikings, the Houston Texans, plus Thursday, Sunday, and Monday night NFL from Westwood One is Sports Radio 1150 and 93.7 FM. I'm Tulsi Reber on The Zone. First Financial is proud to be the title sponsor for the 2021 Chamber of Commerce Lobster Fest and Golf Classic, the Chamber's largest and most popular fundraiser of the year. Howdy, I'm Cal McNeil with First Financial, and come be a part of the two-day fundraising event. Enjoy lobster and steak dinner September 19th at the Breslin Center, and then tee off Monday, September 20th at Pebble Creek Country Club. Support your Chamber of Commerce and reserve a table, register a golf team, or become a sponsor. Call 260-5200 or log on to bcschamber.org for more information. Hi, this is Jeff Vanderwood with Verabank. Verabank is continuing to grow in the Brazos Valley with a brand new full-service banking center on Highway 6 in front of Academy. We have a team of genuine bankers specializing in personal and business banking, wealth management, and investor real estate lending ready to serve you. Verabank is here to help you succeed financially, and you can bank on it. Visit verabank.com today. That's V-E-R-A bank.com. Verabank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. 
Thanks to our listeners and our Aggie broadcast sponsors. Lance Lester at the Lester Group, Zwerneman Flooring, and The Sleep Station. Here's a big gigum to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7 FM. The best is yet to come in College Station. Floater for Spiller. Touchdown, Aggies! Head coach Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies are ready to rise to the top of the SEC. Tackled short. The Aggies defense does it again. Join us Saturday. The Aggies host the New Mexico Lobos. Our coverage begins at 10 a.m. on your home for Aggies football. The Texas A&M Sports Network. Listen to Aggie football on 1150 a.m. and 93.7 FM. Online at RadioAggieland.com. Or, or tell your smart speaker to play Zone 1150. Tech Sags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Uh, as a reminder, all guests who uh, join the show on the B- join us on the BCSI hotline. You no longer have to drive to Houston or Dallas or Austin for major eye surgery such as glaucoma or cataract issues. You can let Dr. K take care of you right here in the BCS. Check them out on the top level of the Physician Center. Call 979-701-2020. The website is mybc- mybcsi.com. All right, OB. I gave you homework assignment. Okay. All right. And I, I want to, and I get, came up with a list myself. Three things that you want to see from the Ags this weekend. And I'll let you go with uh, your three. Well, first of all, I want to see uh, Zach Calzada play well. Secondly, I want to see, I want to see some guys catch. I want, and I want to see him throw down the field. But I also want to see some of the new, re- I want to see Moose Muhammad and, uh, Demond Demas get in the game and it doesn't have to be starting, obviously, but I want to see those a chance to get a, 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 a opportunity to see what those guys can do. Sure. So I would like to see those guys have an opportunity to to get some balls thrown their way, and then I just want to see um, I want to see a, the suffocating defense that I saw in the second half for all game, the whole game. Yep, and the rest of the season. <laughs> Yeah, of course. <laughs> but but I want to see it to where they take away that you know it's like they have that one quarter against Kent State and against uh Colorado. Colorado where you know it's like that dominant pitcher but he has one inning where they get get to him. I want to see him just, just just completely shut it down. Just be just be great the the whole game. Sabanesque, Belichick esque. Whatever you do, great. Take it out. Now, how are you going to beat me? That's what I want to see. Uh, and unfortunately, we've seen some quarterbacks run on A&M this year. That was only for a half against Colorado. He was not able to run at all. They found, they found their, their, their secret weapon there and were able to turn it off. Yeah, and you need to start doing that because I mentioned, you know, K.J. Jefferson will be coming up and a, a few other quarterbacks that can run. Uh, I don't think you have to worry about it as much with, say, uh, uh, Will Rogers, but you're going to have to worry about it when Bryce Young comes in. Yeah, you're going to have to do that. So I'll, I'm going to do my three, and obviously I want to see the same defense we've seen this year and for four quarters. But I'm going to pick a couple things that I, I think we need to fine tune heading into Arkansas. One of those is, all, and they're all going to be three connected. How one affects the next two. Offensive line, I want to see them gel and give push. Okay, I think we saw a little bit more in the second half. I want to see that against an inferior opponent in New Mexico. I want to see that offensive line manhandle those fools, destroy them. That's what I want to see. That then, to me, will open up everything else, starting off with the running game. I want to see that running game the way we're accustomed to seeing them. Get, I, want, I want stats. I do. I want fantasy football stats. I want to see Spiller go for 180. I want to see uh, A-Chain go for 120. I want to see running. I want to see 300 yards of rushing down their throats. All the, those two things combined will then open up Patience for Zach Calzada. He's got time to throw. They got time to run. He's not gonna not, not gonna force the ball. He's gonna have a little bit more patience. I want to see touch on those passes. I want to see Calzada have touch on the little sh- shots to the flats. I want to see him go deep to Caleb Chapman and put it in his in his hands like we saw last week for a play. 
and I want to see those catches made. But that's what I want to see. I do kind of want to steal your idea, though, because I agree with you. I want to see more of a rotation at the wide receiver set. I want to see these young guys develop. So next year and the year after, they are ready to roll. And I think these are the kind of games you can do that in. Uh, it is, but I want to see them develop so you can use them this year. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, DeMond was – he got open deep last week, and they he just – you know, uh, Zach, you know, was looking somewhere else, sure. okay? But uh, at some point, you know, you just got to give that guy a shot. I think he's the type – and what do I know, right? I'm basing it on highlights I've seen from when he was in high school. But he just seems to me that he's the guy that sometimes you just say, okay, on, t- on this play, just run a go route and we're going to throw it to you and let's see what happens. Yeah, he, he's one of those guys that I keep thinking, when is it going to click? And it's not necessarily – he hasn't had a lot of opportunities, obviously. But I feel like at some point during the week of practice or during a game, it's going to click. And when it clicks, it's going to give that, that offense an, an added element Beyond Anaya Smith that they don't have right now. I think it's a, he's a pack of dynamite with a wet fuse. You know, once you finally dry it out and light it, then he's going to explode. But it's just a matter of, of figuring out how to get that fuse lit. And he's not the only one. I want to see Moose Mahal. Oh, I really want to see. When I, when I watch Moose's highlights, again, it's high school, but when I watch them, I keep, I keep t- t- seeing Christian Kirk. Now, it might be a, I'm not saying he's going to be as good as Christian, but I kind of see that kind of player. Now, and I'll tell you, and we're adding to our three things. I gave you my three things. But other things I'd like to see, and I, and I kind of alluded to it earlier. I want to see Caleb Chapman have one of those games that we've gotten, I don't want to say accustomed to seeing, but we saw against Florida. And we, we basically saw against Kent State. Mm-hmm. You know, he went 90 yards, I think, in that game. I want to see them go deep to him. Could have had one last week. But I, I, I want to see that because I think that wrinkle opens everything else up as well. If you can go downfield to Caleb Chapman for a 40, 50 yard gain, just what it does to everybody on the short side of the field. Well, I, I anticipate seeing that this week. I anticipate seeing multiple big plays. And by big plays, I count 20 yards plus. And I anticipate seeing half a dozen at least of those this week. Do you think we see Blake boast at all this week? <sighs> yeah, I do. Uh, I think in the fourth quarter, and I think it'd be smart because you we never just know. saw it. You never know. So I don't want to send a guy in there that's not taking any snaps. At least get him out there if you can. Now, if you, know, if you don't play well and it's reasonably competitive, you don't. But if you're into the fourth quarter and the game's on ice and you got a, you've covered, then, yeah, bring him in there and actually let him throw a couple of passes just to get him some – an idea of, of what, you know, what you're going to be doing out here. You know, I'm excited about Monday's show or even Sunday when I do the Luchador with Billy because I think there's a lot of questions that are going to be answered. And one of those, the, the biggest one is Calzada. Like, I, I, I feel like we're going to know this guy is kind of antsy and it may, take, it may be tough this year or we may know, like, look, he figured it out. Let's go. Now we, our best foot forward moving forward. Would I, I wonder if Jimbo would ever bring in uh... – Run a, uh, a wildcat formation. Just not, not all the game, but just I wonder if he would bring in a wildcat package. With. Is that the kind of thing you, though, unveil? No, you do it next week. You do it next week? If, or do you do it against Alabama? Or do you, they're the kind of team you don't do it against because... You do it next week if you need to. Okay. You know? Yeah. We well, got it ready. Let's not use it unless we but, need I mean, to. I mean, maybe he just thinks, no, that's, that's a gimmick I don't need. But Who do you do it with? Well, Spiller A. Chain or... Anias. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which one. You got options. What about Stowers? Or Stowers. I'm just, I, th- I said that, I made that comment to Billy on Sunday and he just gave me a little Oh, like, you, no. you actually brought up the idea of a. Not necessarily a wildcat, but just kind of bringing in Stowers for a different look, which could include a, uh, a wildcat. And he, he's, he gave me a look like, come on, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I like added wrinkles when teams aren't ready for it. As prepared as Saban is and whatnot, why not? You know? Was it uh, Houston Nutt that got all that started when he had? I think you're right. When he had Darren McFadden Fadden, yeah. and Felix Jones and Peyton Hillis, and it made sense. You had good running backs. And then the great Bill O'Brien did the Watt Cat with J.J. Watt, and I believe he got hurt on that play. J.J. Watt came in and took a snap. Oh yeah, oh yeah, stupid. I think 2014 or 15. Yeah, dumb. 
<laughs> Remember like, that year he was like they were using him at like tight end and he was like catching touchdowns and did like, he? No, I, I never really watched think, the Texans. Yeah, I don't blame you. I think they he had a couple touchdowns in 2014. I can't remember the year it was, but yeah, early on in the Bill O'Brien regime. It's like sending out uh, Jose Canseco to pitch and he messed up his arm. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're bringing up some bad memories for me because Canseco was my guy in the, in in the 80s and 90s, and what a oh my god! And then the ball over his head. Yeah, but off his head. Yeah, for a home run. For a- <laughs> oh, that only happens to the Rangers. But anyway, hey, let me one, one, one quick thing about Conseco. He's got a car wash. I I don't follow him on Twitter anymore because it's just he talks about weird things. But he the other day mentioned going to his car wash, but yeah. spelled his name wrong on his own car wash. Yeah, no, but it's called Conseco's car wash. He spelled it like C O N C Conseco. Yeah, it was, oh, I was like a... either that speak the text or he just doesn't know how to spell his own Freudian. name. Yeah, Freudian, or I would call it Carseco. Carse. See, See, marketing that's, that's genius. Way I would do it. On the A and B text line, we are reminded. Uh, Gil says that A uh, and M played in, at 08 at Albuquerque when the Ags were four oh, and eight, okay. and they won twenty eight to twenty one. And what year was that? Two thousand eight. Hmm. That's not the year they lost to Arkansas State, is it? Oh my gosh! Don't bring up those memories. Goodness. Yesterday you brought up the Oklahoma game. Today you're bringing up Arkansas State. Uh, I'm struggling here. <laughs> Those days, it ain't like it used to be. No, it's not. It is not the way it used to be. All right, when we come back, get a little announcement for everybody. We'll have that. Plus, it's time to bank on it. You're listening to Tech Sags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. This is the Zone, the Zone. Aggieland's All Sports Station. Aggie football is here, and Texas A&M Transportation Services offers parking and shuttle options. Pay $25 cash to park near Bush Library, Bonfire Memorial, or Agronomy Road. Ride the free downtown Bryan shuttle. For pre- and post-game traffic and parking info, or to purchase parking before the game, visit Destination Aggie Land within the TAMU app, download the Park Mobile app, or visit transport.tamu.edu slash football. For those parking with an annual permit, be ready to show us your permit barcode printed on paper or on your smartphone screen. Follow us on Twitter at Get to Aggie Game. If you have a debit card, you're used to spending money. But what if your card actually ended up earning you money? That's not exactly normal, but that's what you can get at A&B. It's called Kasasa Cashback Checking. Don't mind the weird name. What you need to know is that it's a free account with cash rewards. Use your debit card for everyday purchases, and we'll pay you cash back every month. If that doesn't sound like normal banking, well, guess what? We're not a normal bank. So contact A&B today and ask for Kasasa or visit A&B.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Howdy, y'all. This is Cullen Gillespie, former 12th man. I've always tried to help my team on and off the field. And now I'd like to help Texas A&M fans like you cut their electricity bills in half. Yep, in half. It takes less than five minutes and you'll save hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars every year. 90% of Texans overpay for electricity, so don't be one of them. Sign up today at energyogre.com and use code Gilly, G-I-L-L-Y, for a free month of service. Our publications reach every corner of the Brazos Valley, and we want to partner with you in sharing your message with the community. You may recognize a few of our Brian Broadcasting publications. Best of the Brazos Valley. Brazos Life, the annual manual. Welcome home, Brazos Valley. Brazos Family. Brazos Wellness. Brazos Valley Bride. Peace, Brazos Christian Life. With the combined power of seven magazine titles, 11 radio stations, and digital solutions, Brian Broadcasting publications can help you be heard. Call 979-695-9595 to learn more. Now that the foster child I was working with has been reunified with his family, I realized that the hardest part wasn't that bittersweet day I had to say goodbye. It wasn't the time spent with social workers, attorneys, and others to make sure he had what he needed to succeed. It wasn't learning how to advocate for a child in foster care and how to navigate the system. The hardest part was realizing I had what it took to become a CASA volunteer. Make a difference in a child's life by visiting becomeacasa.org. Every child has a chance. It's you. Brought to you by Texas Casa. You can hear Astros baseball all season and postseason long on Sports Radio 1150 and 93.7 FM plus Gospel 97.3 FM thanks to Kelly Burt Dozer. The Astros look to make another World Series run. You can hear the games on The Zone or on Gospel 97.3 FM Thanks to Kelly Burt Dozer, the Houston Astros, the World Series. Listen in all thanks to Kelly Burt Dozer. (laughs) 
Hi, guys. Text Hacks Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. We've got some text messages to get into on the AMB text line. Uh, but before that, let's go to the uh, BCSI hotline. It looks like uh, Chris in Nashville joining the program. Chris, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Chris. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, Olin, how are you? Good. Good deal, good deal. Hey, me? I had a question for you guys. Um, um, one of the things I was wondering about, just watching special teams, um, you know, and I think this is a point that you guys have made before, but we've essentially eliminated um, kickoff and kickoff return from special teams with the new rules. So, you know, you're down to punt and punt return. And for whatever reason, it just seems like we've lost something in terms of punt return. Um, I, I don't know if it's a nice, I don't know if it's coaching. I, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but, but what do you get? I mean, do you guys see punt return being any sort of a threat as yeah. dynamic as a guy as Anias is? I mean, we just don't seem to set it up very well. And, and then when, you, when we do get something set up, we get a penalty. Uh, um, well, that happens so a lot. Just kind of, at all levels of football, it's hard to, for whatever reason, to not block somebody in the back, right? I thought Anias had some opportunities last week to have big returns, and he, and it's easy to say this, he, he chose the wrong direction. Yeah. Uh, I remember one time. Several, if he, there was two or three. Times. I remember one time in particular, had he gone right to his right, yep. he would have had one guy to beat, and he would have beat him. I'm thinking, then he would have had a big play. I'm not saying he scored. But that's easy for me to say. I think it's kind of a crapshoot on on uh, punt returns. You know, the first thing you got to do is make the first guy miss, and then just see if you know if you can get up field. And I think Anias is one of those guys. It's almost like playing Yahtzee. Right. You know, you do it enough, and sooner or later it's going to come up right. Uh, I think on the uh, kickoff returns, I think now they let uh, A Chain return one now. He's so I think yeah. now with with everything going on with the offense. They were saying, okay, let's take more chances and let's use our big play possibility. So I think you'll see them return more kickoffs in the future. I think with the defense that we have, too, you can see more chances because if you do get up with the long side of the field, you can still hold up with that defense. And I think it allows you, at least against these opponents, to try to experiment a little bit. I think Anias on punt returns uh, very often in his career has been like one tackle away, one block away. And I think that's something I really believe on both of those kickoffs and punt returns. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm betting they're putting more emphasis on it in practice than they usually do because, A, they, like I said, they see the need to try to generate points in other ways and field position in other ways. And, B, they're looking, look, we've got these dynamic returners. We're going to need some help. So let's, feed, you know, let's work on it harder to see if we can't break something. Appreciate it, my friend. Thanks so much for calling the show. Oh, was it? I think I cut him off. Oh, sorry, totally. sorry, Chris. Yeah, those are Chris fun. always has good questions. Yeah, no, I appreciate the phone call. Thank you very much, and apologies on uh, if you were saying something there. I thought I heard something. It's time to bank on it, though. Authentic relationship-based banking built for real life. Go see Joel Jackson and the team. You can learn more online at verabank.com. All right, Ob, if you're banking on something, what are we banking on? Well, you know what, I'm banking. On, uh, I've gone to the bank and wrote the same check so many times I'm overdrawn, but I'm going to keep doing it until it happens. I am banking on DeMon Demas finally catching a long pass and scoring his first touchdown. I know we're not – you know, you, pro you probably shouldn't go in on Demas right. because he hadn't played. He still hadn't caught a pass, but by gosh. You're banking on it, though. Sooner or later, it has to happen. Sooner or later, and the last time I saw – New Mexico, the backup quarterback was was throwing all kinds of dimes and big yeah. plays. So I'm I'm banking on it. I'm gonna bank on it till it happens. You know what I'm banking on? You don't, because I haven't told you yet. I'm banking on the Aggies will force an interception for the fifth consecutive game. I was looking through the notes, and obviously against Colorado, Jaden Peavy had his. Mm -hmm. Leon O'Neill against Kent State. Against North Carolina. Andre White, and then against Tennessee, Brian George, okay? Four straight games, they have forced an interception, not just a turnover, an interception. I'm going to bank on the Aggies' defense getting a fifth straight game with an interception, and it might be, it's not going to be Jalen Jones because they don't throw to him, but it might be Leon again. I hope so, and, and that'd be a good bet because, again, he's a playmaker. And does anything, 
change momentum more than an interception? No. It is, I mean, it just takes the air out of the, the team who throws it and then the excitement level. That, I mean, it's, I'm going to go back to the Kent State game. Obviously, it was a pick six, but how that felt. The Colorado game, how that felt after PV's pick. It just felt like, all right, here we go. Unfortunately, they weren't able to go, but that's what it felt like. Well, usually it either denies the opponent a scoring opportunity or enhances your scoring opportunity. So, and against Kent State, Leon did both. Yeah. No, yeah, he, he sure did. Did that one in the end zone, then the pick six? Yeah, he he did. Look, the defense can do it, and and I, I really feel and everything works together. I think we saw more. We saw better play for the linebackers last week. Mm -hmm. More of that. More pass rush. Hopefully, Miles Jones is back out there in the, for the DBs. Could be. A, could, well, the, the pass rush came on last week. Absolutely, <laughs> especially in the second half. I love the some of the schemes they have. To there was one with the way they rushed it. And Antonio Johnson, I think, they actually created a lane for him. I think he might have just not, you know, batted the ball down. But that quarterback looked up and he's like, oh, my gosh. So how many points did the Aggies give up this weekend? Seven. Seven or ten in that range, yeah. Probably closer to seven. Yeah. How many points did they score? Um, I think they're going to score in the high 40s. 40. I have them scoring 42 is what I have. Okay. 45. I'd like that. Yeah. You know what I'd really like? What? 60 to 3. Yeah. That's yeah. what I like. Put an extra digit. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't. Uh, you don't have to do that to uh, to New Mexico. They've never done anything to make you mad. But doesn't matter. Uh, Just but play I, angry, baby. Go out and yeah, try to try to make a huge statement. Like like Missouri back in 93. I think that was like 70 to 3. Yeah. I have not gone to a game at Caulfield at 11 a.m. I think since my college days. It's been a while. It'll be fun. That'll be 10 a.m. for the... Uh, New Mexico players body clock. That's right. It does pay. It does make a difference. Ob, thank you so much you for a great week. We'll see you here on Saturday. And uh, all right, guys, hour number two coming up. Billy in the house. Alyssa Lang of the SEC Network. All that and more here on Texags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. This is your home for Texags Tex Radio. Radio. Louis Bellina. Louis Bellina. And Chip Howard. Now listen, this is the zone. 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. You know we do. You know we my name is Bobby. I'm a veteran and lost my leg to a roadside bomb. My victory was going from a wheelchair to becoming a weightlifting champion. I'm Sam. I'm a veteran. My victory was finding a career I can be proud of and supporting my family. America's veterans are on their most important tour, the tour of their lives. I'm a veteran. My victory was going from homeless to home. At DAV, we're on a mission to help veterans get the benefits they've earned. I'm a veteran, and my victory was finishing my education. DAV offers veterans of all generations a lifetime of support for victories great and small. My victory was proving that disability is not a limitation. My victory was getting my service dog and new best friend. We help more than a million veterans every year as they face and conquer their challenges. My victory is being able to be there for my family. When America's veterans win, we all win. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. From WTAW, I'm Chelsea Reber with a news update on The Zone. A man in his 50s is the most recent coronavirus death in Brazos County. The health district reports of the 303 total pandemic deaths, one person was vaccinated. More information is online at brazoshealth.org. More than 135 nonprofits turned out yesterday afternoon to kick off the third annual Brazos Valley Gives campaign. Early giving starts Sunday, September 19th, which is the Sunday and you can start telling your donors that it's available um, from September 19th and October 19th. There is one prize that's an early giving prize, which will kind of add up in total, and that's a, that's a very fun incentive. Co-chair Molly Watson says this year's goal is $750,000. The 18-hour day of giving is Tuesday, October 19th. More information is online at brazosvalleygives.org. Brian Mayor Andrew Nelson has announced the city receiving an $11,000 matching grant from the Texas Historical Commission. The grant is for a monument assessment at Grandview and the Freedman's area of the Bryan City Cemetery. This is close to 2,300 graves on these two sites. It's a big part of our history and our cultural heritage. This follows a recent historical marker being placed at Grandview Cemetery. 
A federal judge accuses Texas leaders of failing to act on her orders to fix chronic neglect in the foster care system. It's the latest development as the state struggles to implement reforms Judge Janice Graham Jack ordered as she presides over a 2011 class action lawsuit against Family and Protective Services alleging children were held in unsafe conditions. The agency commissioner acknowledged that caseworkers are not adequate for the tasks they're assigned. The number of foster children has hovered around 400 since June. The judge says she wants to coordinate with the plaintiffs and the state to find solutions but would like the governor's blessing before proceeding. Chris Summer, TSN News. And I'm Chelsea Reber on The Zone. Maroon U is your ultimate stop for brand name apparel, gifts, and accessories for the entire family. From Columbia, 47 Brand, Yeti, Dooney and Burke, and Adidas. We're able to outfit you for every occasion. Visit Maroon U and our family of companies on Holloman Drive and College Station to shop the latest in brand name Aggie merchandise. Shop Maroon U today. Voted best in the Brazos, best gift shop since 2016. Maroon never looks so good with Maroon U. If you owe the IRS back taxes, then get ready to pay up. The IRS has giant private collection agencies actively tracking down folks who owe the IRS. So if you think dodging them was stressful in the past, it's going to get a whole lot tougher. Optima Tax Relief has this advice. Don't wait. Solve your tax problems now before it's too late. Optima Tax Relief works to stop the demand letters, stop the aggressive collection actions, and stop the IRS collectors from targeting you. Ask Optima about the Fresh Start Initiative, one of the biggest breaks the IRS has ever offered. If you qualify, you could save thousands, and nobody knows this program better than they do. Optima is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and they get results, having resolved over a billion dollars of tax debt for their clients. Get a fresh start. Call today for your free consultation. Call 8 800 936 9033. 800 936 9033. 800 936 9033. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Good morning, sports fans. I'm Zach Taylor with your Aggie Sports Minute on the Zone. This sports minute is brought to you by Hill Cometa Roofing and Supply. Call 936 825 0500 or click HillCoSupply.com. Seventh-ranked Texas A&M football returns home tomorrow to host New Mexico at Kyle Field. Now, one player looking to sure things up this week is quarterback Zach Calzada, who struggled a bit in the 10-7 win over Colorado. However, Coach Jimbo Fisher says he's seen improvement. I thought this week he's practiced really well. And that's not me. That's not coach talk. I thought today was exceptional. We'll hope we'll continue it and we'll call the right plays and play well around him. But we'll grow, and there's a lot of growing things in there. But there's a lot of want to, and there's a lot of ability. He can throw the football. We'll see what Calzada does tomorrow when the Ags entertain the Lobos at 11 a.m. Broadcast will be right here on The Zone. Out on the volleyball court, it's a Lone Star showdown tonight at Reed as Texas A&M welcomes top-ranked Texas to town. Coach Bird Kuhn on the rivalry. It's awesome for them to be coming here. We kind of started working on that when we took this, the job together. We talked, and that's something I wanted to set up, and now obviously they're coming into the SEC, so it'll be natural. But it's going to be a big match. Every match is a big match for us, but it's always nice to be home. And it's a football weekend, so I think there'll be great energy. First serve between the Aggies and Longhorns is tonight at 6 o'clock at Reed. By the way, that's also the same time that 15th-ranked Aggie soccer kicks off its SEC slate at Kentucky. And that's been your Aggie Sports Minute, brought to you by Hill Cometa Roofing and Supply. On The Zone, I'm Zach Taylor. The Bellucci Hour Happy Hour is a must part of any Aggie football season. Join Billy Lucci of Tex Ags and Zach Taylor, the Infomaniac, every Monday and Thursday at 6 at the tap. Or listen in right here on Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. The Bellucci Hour Happy Hour every Monday, Thursday at 6 is brought to you by King Ranch Saddle Shop. Also brought to you in part by B&B Automotive. It's the Bellucci Hour Happy Hour. It is Texas Radio. We are presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. Love me some David Gardner's Jewelers. If you're in the market for an engagement ring, wedding band, or stackable anniversary ring, save the date for David Gardner's ring in season promotion. That's going to be October the 13th through the 16th. David Gardner's is going to have an extended selection of diamonds, engagement rings, wedding bands, and more. Don't miss an opportunity to swing by while they're having their largest selection of the year at the best prices. 
Check out davidgarnersjewelers.com for that info. All right. Um, by the way, we're here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. We will get to some text messages on the AMB text line and on the BCS I hotline. But I uh, do want to kind of restate what's going on here in this hour. Billy will be joining us here momentarily. Alyssa Lang of the SEC Network joining us at 935. At 10 o'clock, obviously the final countdown with Steve and Seth McKinney. So it should be a, a fun, fun show. Also, we are going YouTube for three hours today, guys. That's right. All three hours of the show today because we got to the 6,000 mark of subscribers on YouTube. Every time we hit 1,000 mark, we do an, a bonus hour and a half of the show for that day. So you guys do 1,000 every day. We'll do it every day. That's how we roll here on the program. So um, looking forward to that. I did have a topic that I will restate, and I will give you some of my thoughts on this. How many rushing and passing yards are the Ags going to go for versus New Mexico? Typically, I don't like to do like stat hot topics, but I think because of the issues with the offense last week, especially quarters one, two, and three, I think it's um, appropriate for this conversation against a team like New Mexico. And I, I discussed it a little bit on the threads, but I'm looking to see this. I'm looking to see the trio go for 100, right? All three. And when I say that, a couple guys rushing for over 100 yards. Okay, I, I'm expecting to see Spiller go for 160 to 180, somewhere in that range. A-chain, 110, with like a 55-yard touchdown. I'm expecting to see Anaya Smith contributing once again. I'm, I'm expecting for Jalen Watermeyer to be used a little bit more. He's getting right now about four catches per game. I want to see more, right? And I, and I think Calzada is going to throw for 276 yards. I didn't say 275. I said 276. I wouldn't mind 330, 400. But I, I think the appropriate number, not the appropriate, the, my mind is telling me it's going to be around 270 yards, and I'll be happy with that. Be happy with a, a, a defensive performance where they can run the ball quite a bit, Zach uh, works out some kinks, feels comfortable commanding that offense, and then we head into the Arkansas week with you know those nerves behind us. It's we they've moved on, we've moved on. It's time to roll. That's what I'm expecting to see this weekend. I hope to see that. It's about time we see that. If you want to get in, you can nine seven nine six nine three eleven fifty the BCSI hotline. And you can text the show as well. How many yards do you expect for the uh, Ags to go for passing and rushing? 979-693-1150, the A&B text line. With that, we go to the news and social center. Tomas Romo joining us. Fine Texas Aggie says, Zach needs a type of game to grow his confidence. I'm predicting 400 total plus yards and a second team receiver grabs his first touchdown of the season tomorrow. All right. Hey, you know what? I'm all for it. I'm all for... A, one of those games where, like, look, we heard all offseason heading up to, you know, through camp to how good of an arm Zach has and how he can sling it. And, yes, there was different skill sets between he and Haynes, but it was a close battle for that quarterback spot, the top quarterback spot. I'm ready to see that. All right, now you've had the week to prepare. Jimbo's been in your ear every day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Bam, tomorrow, the test is on. Are you ready to roll? What else you got for us, Tomas? Ag94 Whoop says, 250 rushing, 250 passing. I think Zach throws one interception, five total touchdowns. Ags win 38-20. to I'll take a 500-yard performance. Heck yeah, I will. Um, if you, look, I, I know that Jimbo has said that we're going to sling it. We're going to throw the ball. I know that. And I'm excited to see that. But... You know, the balance to me is the key. Running when you are needing to run the ball and establish your game and passing to open things up. Let's go. I mean, to me, that's what it comes down to. You know, being able to, I, I, I am not, like balance is fine and, and being able to throw the ball a lot. That's, of course, that's what you want to be able to do in the SEC long term. But I'm trying to make the game easy for Zach. Not that I have anything to say with it. But I'm trying to see, make the game easy for Zach. So when the hard times come, he is ready and he's processed and other areas are working. I told you guys at the top of the show the three areas that I wanted to see, and I think they all work together. If the offensive line gives you that push that we expect to see, 
and manhandles New Mexico, then everything else will fall together. Everything else will feel better. It opens up the run game, which we're accustomed to seeing. It also opens up Calzada and his patience out there. We want to see touch on his passes. We want to see timing. Billy's got his speaker on as he's coming in the studio. Like, just like, let's go. That's what I want to see. We see those three. If it, to me, it starts with the offensive line, and it always does. But if, you, if the offensive line gets the push that we expect that allows you to establish the run and it gives Zach the time to throw and just to calm his nerves, that touch is going to come. You know, that first series, I'm sure he'll be amped up again. But it's not going to be the exact same experience that we saw in Colorado. He's going to be ready to roll. He's going to. It's, those are the three layers that have to work together offensively to open it all up. And as Billy joins the show, I'll, I'll just kind of tell him. To me, Billy, it all starts with the offensive line. If the offensive line gives Zach time, everything works t- together because you can establish the run, and he's going to have now time to make the plays he wants to make confidence, and also we won't have to rely on him throwing so much. I 100% agree with you on that, and I think that's absolutely the key to whether or not they win this game. I mean, win this game. (laughs) Win the first couple of SEC games with Zach and his first couple of SEC starts. And uh, so, yeah, I think think the O-line is the key to every – because also it's not just about giving him time to throw and settle down and not take shots and stuff. It also has to do with them better establishing that running game. And, and that's what teams are scared of. And that's the way A&M can wear teams down. And that's how things start to come easier as those DBs start taking a pounding, trying to tackle Isaiah Spiller. They tire out chasing Devon A-Chain down on one play. They don't know what's coming out of the two back. And they get leaned on by these big physical offensive linemen, and those guys start feeling confident. And then you're asking the, the defense to rush the passer. And they're a little more tired, and they're a step slower, and the O-line's more confident. And you don't, you're, you're in second and four, and you don't know, you're not expecting the pass, so your ears aren't pinned back. So all of that, I think it all stems off the running game. But here's the irony to that, and Steve and I talked about this yesterday. Does a and have to throw to set up the run? And it's weird because if that's the opposite way, and of it might be because you might have to like what Colorado did and just kind of daring you to throw with numbers, and you might have to take it and succeed to force them to back off of you a little bit. And so I wouldn't be surprised seeing them throw it a lot this week just to put it out there, because Calzada can throw and he can throw the deep ball and he can throw. You know, if he gets going, he can throw that vertical. He, he's, we've seen it. He's big league arm. You even saw some of those throws against Colorado. If he can get that going, then teams have to kind of go, man, is it, is it wise to sit, sit up here and dare them to run? Is it wise to be kind of stuck in one-on-one? But Bury them for that. You're going to, okay, you're going to put eight in the box? All right, here we go. Yeah, but you have to, you have to do it first. And, right. and, and I don't think in one game it's going to, make Barry Odom scared at Arkansas or even Mississippi State. They got some tough tests coming up, David. They really do. Mississippi State's D-line is strong, and they play they play like Colorado. They try to blow everything up. That's why it wasn't a good matchup for A&M. They just try to blow everything up, and you got guys that aren't real sure what they're doing, so things get blown up. So in a couple weeks, you better be ready for Mississippi State. Arkansas, you know, you got Kenyon out there as a new tackle. They're going to set a guy out very, very wide, very wide, make him make a really deep pass set that he's not used to do. There, there are a lot of things that teams are going to come after A&M on, and if the receivers aren't getting open and getting separation, then Calzada has to make perfect throws, and he has to decide to throw a pass. If, if, if I'm from me to you, that's an easy decision. If, if you're sitting right here and blanketing me, and I look at the next guy, and he's blanketed, and I look at the next guy, and he didn't get off the line. So it's, I, don't, I think they've got issues offensively right now, but they're not ones that aren't fixable. The O-line is going to get better. We, we knew this. We should have expected it. We talked about it all summer. It was the number one concern. 
And if they look like this in game seven and eight, then I would say something's wrong. Nothing's wrong that they look like that after second game. After sure. their first game against a veteran power five defense, there's nothing wrong with the fact that they struggle. You would rather them not, but to say that was completely unexpected and out of left field or that there's some major issue, I think is completely getting ahead of yourself and off base. Six, seven, eight games in, then yeah, you should see noticeable improvement. But I've said all along, by this, if they could start off solid and by the second half of the year, they can be good. So let's see how they do in these first couple of conference games before we rush to judgment. Quarterback, you had a guy last week against Kent State that never had played a college football game. And he looked really good at times. He threw three picks. And you got a guy this Saturday that came off the bench who has never played a college football game and came off the bench in a, on the road in a defensive slugfest. It's too early to even know anything about either of them, much less uh, Calzada. So the one thing that concerns me that, that I can't just say, okay, we shouldn't, I mean, that's that's that, is wide receiver and not seeing a bunch of uh, real estate and guys figuring out how to get open. And I, 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 for two games now, you haven't seen a whole lot of it. All right. Is that a personnel is issue? Is that a route running issue? Is it maybe the timing with the quarterback? Because that does play a part in how those guys get open, having that, that chemistry with timing. And when you say route running and you've got veteran guys and you also factor in, like, what are they being taught to do? So it's everything. I think it's a little bit of everything. Everything. And so, but I do, I think you'll see other guys playing. Um, look, it's hard because they have to outperform the guys in practice. And Chase Lane has got it done on the field over the course of a whole season. Caleb Chapman has got it done in a few games. And then he, he's been hurt a lot. Mm -hmm. He's been hurt a lot. Um, and obviously, Anias is, is kind of the, the alpha there. He's the go-to. He's the proven guy. One of the better slot receivers in the SEC, if not the country. But you got, got, you got Demas. You've got Yul Keith Brown, you've got Moose Muhammad, you've got Devin Price, a veteran like a Jalen Preston. You just named five guys, and I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out, but you just named five right off the rip that have flashed it. But the problem is they have to outperform those guys in practice, but then at the same time you also have to go, when are we going to at least get a chance to find out who's the gamer? Is, is one of them a gamer more so than practice? I mean, you can't stink at practice, and I'm right. not saying – I'm not saying any of those guys do or don't, but you can't just suck at practice and you can't be hurt all the time and you can't, you know, not handle your business off the field. But let's assume that out of those five, the majority of them don't fail in those areas. At some point, you got to kind of say, we're not getting big plays out of the unit. So let's see if any of these guys can provide that. But that you don't ever know if they don't get a chance. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about who has to get it done. We know Calzado's got to get it done. We'll go a little bit deeper than that. Uh, but right now, I want to remind you to text radio to 900-900. It is your chance to win the Big Friday giveaway, courtesy of our friends at Aggieland Outfitters. And uh, here we go, guys. It's the uh, brand-new Travis Matthews shirt that uh, is perfect for anybody on Northgate. So I've, I've told you about the material. I like to show it off because it's a, it's a nice-looking shirt. Here's the front of it. It says, uh, someone get me a beer. As I hold it up awkwardly on the air, there we go. And on the back, it says never drinking again. It's awesome shirt, but it's very breathable. Uh, the the materials, like, you know, when you have those t-shirts, you're like, man, that's a good material t-shirt. This is one of those good material t-shirts. It is really nice. It's got the alternating maroon and gray colors on it as well. It's got the uh, Matthews logo on the back. And it says, as I mentioned, never drinking again on there on the back. It is not a expensive shirt at all. $39.99. You'll want to wear it tonight when you go out on Northgate, stop by, uh, Aggieland Outfitters, pick it up. And they also have the uh, awesome Quattro Ranch Jello shot there with a crunch, but melts in your mouth. Perfect, healthy snack for all Aggies out there. You want to check it out. By the way, Cars and Coffee going to be held on Sunday. Uh, that was last Sunday, I should say. Uh, it was a great event out there. You want to check it out as well um, whenever they do those there at uh, their friends at Rockdale Coffee Roasters. All right, it is Aggieland Outfitters. You'll definitely want to check it out this weekend. Yeah. 
This is the Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Even though we're currently closed, you can explore the Bush Library and Museum from the comfort of your own home. Visit the museum exhibits, Presidential Pond, Barbara Bush Rose Garden, and more with our virtual tour. Check out our permanent exhibits gallery online to view over 100 new photos showcasing different areas of the museum. View our education page to learn about the newest learning resources, resources for teachers and students, and game apps. Don't forget to follow us on social media to see photos of our traveling exhibits, programs, and updates to the museum. Visit bush41.org for more information. Does your bank know your first name? At Normagee State Bank, they do. Normagee State Bank is locally owned, controlled, and operated. This local personal touch means banking decisions are made on site the same day you request it. Normandy State makes banking easy. They're open Saturdays, offer state-of-the-art online banking, bill paying, fund transfers, check and statement images. Normandy State, where customer service is their priority. Normandy State Bank, rock solid. Member FDIC. The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. Thanks to our listeners and our Aggie broadcast sponsors, Schulte Roofing, Prosperity Bank, Hargrove Insurance, and Rudy's Barbecue. Here's a big gigum to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on the Zone 1150 and 93.7 FM. People join Walk MS to raise awareness and funds that change the world for everyone affected by multiple sclerosis. MS attacks the brain and spinal cord. It's the most common neurological disease leading to disability in young adults. Walk MS brings communities together, creating teams with friends, loved ones, and coworkers to rally around those we care about and end MS forever. Join us. Together we are stronger. Walk MS fundraising accelerates research breakthroughs and life-changing breakthroughs. It will take all of our passion, determination, and fundraising to end MS forever. Together, we can change the world for people with MS. Join us. Register today, start a team, and raise funds at walkms.org. The best is yet to come in College Station. Floater for Spiller. Touchdown, Aggie! Head coach Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies are ready to rise to the top of the SEC. Tackled short. The Aggies defense does it again. Join us Saturday. The Aggies host the New Mexico Lobos. Our coverage begins at 10 a.m. on your home for Aggies football. The Texas A&M Sports Network. Listen to Aggie football on 1150 a.m. and 93.7 FM. Online at RadioAggieland.com. Or, or tell your smart speaker to play Sony 1150. Texas Radio presented by David Garner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Good news, ladies and gentlemen. We will do all three hours on YouTube today, so you'll get to see the final countdown if you want to do that. But uh, I would highly recommend you becoming a Texags.com subscriber because you get to watch the show all three hours anytime you want. And that's just like, that's not even that big of a deal. How about all the content we're giving you and Bronny doing stuff, Howell, obviously Lucci and his insider information. Definitely want to go to Texags.com and become a subscriber. We will get to the A&B text line here in a moment, and uh, we'll also check out the BCSI hotline, 979-693-1150. This segment, I want to get it done. Who are some people that need to get it done? Billy's got a, a name or two to throw out our way. I'll get it started because I see him on his phone. Activating the text X credit card. Oh, now, look at you. You're you mul- multitasking. Well. I need to do that. These are like, without showing the card, these are like the ugliest cards ever. They're 1984-looking cards. Yeah, I'm kind of embarrassed to use it. Like I like my platinum one that, yeah. like, when you hit it down, it makes a noise. Like, hey, please pay attention to me. I'm important. I've got an important, uh, very hard metal-feeling card. Now, these are, like, the old-school green, <laughs> like, I mean, just awful things. Like, I feel like we're flying on, like, Continental Airlines with people smoking around you with the ashtrays. Like, it feels really weird. It is what we call vintage. Leave it it to Elizabeth. Hey, so getting it done. Yes. I want to see Jalen Watermeyer get it done. I want him more involved. Yeah. 
Okay, last year through three games, and I, he's never been a high volume receiver. Mm-hmm. I looked through last year's game totals. There's yeah. never been a high four. You typically in the four to five well, catch range. Well, I have him uh, last year looked like six to eight catches a game. He had some fours, obviously. Yeah. This year he's got uh, eight catches on the year, four games. So last year though, he had 15 receptions through the first three games. He's a little bit off that that total right now. Six to eight seems like a good number to get him involved. He's not going to get you 120 yards in a game, typically, right? He can. Of course he can. He's got the skill set. I don't know if he has yet. No, I think last year his high was 91. At Bama. Uh, so yeah. that I want to see him more involved. And, and that chemistry, that security blanket that he could become for Zach, to me, could be huge. I agree with you. And I think both he and the receivers need to run, like, crisper, tighter, cleaner routes. Uh I noticed last week at Colorado, a lot of them were rounding off routes after their breaks, and that's not acceptable. That's not helping a quarterback. It's not helping you. It's not helping your offense, your team. As for Jalen, here's what I'll say. People forget that, you know, I'm, and this guy, he's, he's an all-SEC tight end. And people forget even in, in route to becoming that last year, which is what he was. He was quiet against North Carolina. He was quiet against Vandy. I believe he was quiet against Mississippi State and quiet against LSU. That's four of ten games just right there off the top of my head that he was quiet in. Um, So for him to be quiet in the first two games with not one but two new quarterbacks – and, and still catch eight passes. It's not like he. We're talking about he's he's been non-existent. He right. made a huge catch against Colorado. Sure, um, could have had another one too. Yeah, still has eight catches in two games, and that's quiet for him. We agree. And but he's been quiet in games in the past, and then he's very loud, and he makes a major impact. You look at South Carolina. You look at Arkansas. You look at Auburn. You mentioned that Bama game, Florida last year. So in some huge A&M wins, Wademeyer was a monster. Uh, so I think we'll still see that, but I think, you, I think he needs to like be a little more assertive on one hand, but really I think it's more about the QBs, two new QBs, and just getting on the same page with them and them knowing, like you mentioned, the security blanket, and them knowing that, and then A&M in big moments down in the red zone. He's going to have – here's the deal, and why you're saying that, because you feel the same way I do and every A&M fan does. We know the Ags are going to need him mm-hmm. to move the ball and score points against Arkansas, to move the ball and score points against tough Mississippi State defense, to go up to Columbia, Missouri, and beat Missouri. Like in the next few weeks, they're going to need a lot from number 85. He's got to play like an all-conference, all-American NFL tight end, and that doesn't even count for Alabama where that might need to be where he has that 120-yard game. He might need to be the weapon that Bama can't stop. Some, whatever, somebody's going to have to in that one. But we just know that they're going to need Jalen Wademeyer coming up. So I'm looking at his numbers from last year, and uh, two catches, eight catches, five catches, four catches, six catches, three catches, four catches, eight catches, five catches. So really he's on that same trajectory, mm-hmm. right? You just want to see, we want to see the, 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 the eight-catch game, yep. that seven, eight-catch game, and, and it would help. Zach out a lot. If, if I had my choice, I'd rather see it next week. I'd like to see it both, just get a little warm-up this week. Get but five, six catches this week, sure. If you told me he's going to catch seven, eight passes against Arkansas for 75 yards or so and a touchdown, I'll feel a lot better about A&M winning that game. That's going to be tough with Grant Morgan, Bumper Pool, Jalen Catalan. They're tight end. They're, they're, they're a problem in the middle of the field where, where you like to see a tight end work. But Jalen can – the good thing about him is he can work all over the field. And you can line him up at receiver, and there's a million different things you can do with him. Well, and then if you're asking me what defense I buy more stock in, Arkansas or A&M's, obviously I'm going A&M. Arkansas is going to have a hard time moving the ball in Texas A&M. They should. They should. Uh, who are somebody – who's somebody you're looking at to get it done this weekend? Jalen was one. Uh – Zach, we, we said it was obvious. I, I want to see – I'd like to see just that O-line in general. Yep. I want to see them step up and play really well and, and that run – and at, as a result, that running game get untracked and just kind of cut up, cut up a defense, carve it up, put up some big numbers. 
Um, so I'd, I'd like to see the O-line come together. I'd like to see that as well. I think we're going to have Alyssa Lang here in a few minutes on the program from, from the SEC Network. Right now, I want to talk about my buddy Chance McClay and Heritage Films, uh, yourheritagefilm.com. This is something that everybody who's listening right now would be like, you know, I need to get my mom this for Christmas. I need to get my dad this for Father's Day, I, for their birthday, because it is something that uh, you want your family story being told, captured on film, and that's what they do so, so well, guys. They do Netflix, Amazon, Disney Plus style documentary. They are so, so good at that, guys. And Chance is the most normal down-to-earth guy out there. He's a good old boy, don't get that wrong, but he is creative as they come. And he can tell stories like nobody else. I'm going to have him linked up with my dad here soon. It takes about eight to ten weeks, a slave to the process. He wants to get it right. He's advertising with us because he knows that Aggies love their story. They love their history. And that's why he's here on Tech Sags. You want to check it out, yourheritagefilm.com. The number to get in touch with Chance, 713-893-8341. Again, 713-893-8341. I'm Chelsea Reber with your community calendar on The Zone. Learning at the library with the Brazos County Master Gardeners is this Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Mounts Library. Help make Christmas happen for a family in need. This Saturday, come out to a benefit at Fort Half Moon Saloon in Somerville for live music, food, and live and silent auctions. Contact Dogs Motorcycle Club for more information. Navasota Theater Alliance presents the Sugar Bean Sisters. Performances run through Sunday. Email Alliance at gmail.com to purchase tickets. Hospice Brazos Valley is offering three groups dedicated to assist adults grieving a loss. There is no cost to attend, but RSVP is required. Call 979-821-2266. Your home for the NFL with Sunday, Monday, and Thursday night NFL from Westwood One is Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Listen in from the first week to the Super Bowl on Aggieland's Home for Sports. I'm Chelsea Reber on The Zone. Progressive's Home and Auto Bundle Extrava Festa Saifatha, the annual year-long event for saving big on Home and Auto Insurance. These savings are available up until and straight through Labor Day, Halloween, Clover Cleveland's birthday, Taco Tuesday, the anniversary of the moon landing, White Chocolate Day. The sale literally never ends. You can come on Jupiter's Ascension, National Pisces Day, but not Leap Day. <laughs> Just kidding. We're doing Leap Day because every day is perfect for saving money with a Home and Auto Bundle only at Progressive. But for real, we're not doing White Chocolate Day because White Chocolate is gross. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discounts not available in all states or situations. Howdy, y'all. This is Cullen Gillespie, former 12th man. I've always tried to help my team on and off the field, and now I'd like to help Texas A&M fans like you cut their electricity bills in half. Yep, in half. It takes less than five minutes, and you'll save hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars every year. 90% of Texans overpay for electricity, so don't be one of them. Sign up today at energyogre.com and use code Gilly, G-I-L-L-Y, for a free month of service. Brian Broadcasting is your home for high school football. Brian High, A&M Consolidated, Rudder, and College Station High. Play on the Brian Broadcasting family of stations. No matter where you are, hear every play, every game, all season long. Thanks to A&B, Blinn College, BCS Toyota, and Ed Phillips Plumbing. To find out when and where to hear your favorite team, go to BrazosFootball.com. Yeah, that's right. The Ags are 2-0 no matter how they got there. If you miss Tex Ags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers, you miss this. Well, let's start. I mean, let's start with the good, right? The fact that it kind of looked like a wrecking crew defense of the past, and mm -hmm. you know, after that first quarter. Why you brought Mike Elko there is, you know, hey, you, you need to make sure that you can make adjustments, and Colorado gashed them up early, and then all of a sudden, after halftime, it was it was locked down, and you needed to have that. It is Tex-Ags Radio, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. on The Zone. This song sounds like, like a fake version of Friends. It's Tex-Ags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers, here in the Rollo Insurance Studio, having a good old time breaking things down as the Ags get ready to... Uh, Prepare to battle New Mexico. Lucci's in studio. I'm here. And right now we go to the BCSI hotline. Alyssa Lang from the SEC Network joining the show. Alyssa, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I'm, I'm very excited. I've been to College Station before for other events, but this is actually my first football game, getting to come to Kyle Field. And I, I've been at the SEC Network almost four years, so it's, it seems kind of criminal that this is my first time here. So I, I'm very excited. 
Yeah, we're fired up. That's too long. Peter Burton, we see too much of Peter and Tom and Cole. <laughs> we need more of Alyssa, no question. Um, how fired up are you for a, a, your first game at Kyle Field? Like you said, College Station's one thing. Uh, I know Burns has probably told you where to have dinner and things like that, but for, for tomorrow, Kyle Field should be, I don't know, I don't know if it'd be 100,000, but close to it, a uh, little S morning SEC football with the Aggies and Lobos. Yeah, I, I'm really excited. I've gotten to talk to a couple of players throughout the week just in game prep and, and getting ready for this matchup, and every single one of them I've asked, you know, I, I always am straight up, hey, I've never been here before, what should I expect? And I think every single one of them said, oh, give it about 10 minutes and you'll probably want to scream right there with the fans. <laughs> so uh, I actually talked to PV yesterday and he said, you know, it, it's such a experience to get used to. And I said, you know, do you ever feel bad for opposing offenses? And they were all kind of like, you know, for a split second. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, no, this is the 12th man. Uh, this is why we came to play here. So uh, I I'm very much looking forward to it because as you said, Peter and Cole and everyone else who I know personally, who's come through here and gotten to do games here, they all talk about the atmosphere, uh, but they all say you can't really describe it until you're actually in the stadium and you're standing there and the Aggies are running into the end zone and 12th man is literally losing their mind. So I hope that I can't hear anything by the time I wake up on Sunday morning. I hope it's that loud uh, on Saturday afternoon for sure. Alyssa, from talking to the players and I'm sure you know Jimbo and the coaches, what's been your early lead into the game takeaway on, on Zach Calzada and how everyone's feeling about uh, the, court, the quarterback making his first career start tomorrow. Yeah, uh, so we have coaches meetings later this afternoon. I'm hoping to get a, a good idea of how Jimbo and everybody feels about Zach coming out there. But as I said, you know, I talked to a couple of players this week and, and that was one of my first questions, right? What's the biggest difference when Haynes King is under center versus Calzada. And the, the answer was really always the same. You know, we know Haynes is a great runner and he can take off maybe even one of the fastest guys on the team from what I'm gathering. Um, but they're very confident in Zach's arm. You know, it's, it's a challenge for a, a backup quarterback to get thrown in the way he did last week, knowing that they don't take a lot of reps with the ones throughout the week. He, he hasn't gotten those reps really since they were back in that quarterback battle. So uh, all those guys seemed pretty confident that throughout this week now with Calzada being back there with the starters, really falling into that starting role that his mentality has changed, right? He's, all these guys said that when they came out, on practice, came out to practice on Monday, that Zach just felt different, that his mentality has just shifted. And I, I think you always talk about being the backup and preparing as the starter, right? But there's always that mental switch that flips when you do actually get that nod to trot out there as a starting quarterback. So they said he's, he's been vocal as far as being a leader, knowing that he's the starting quarterback of this football team for at least the foreseeable future next couple of weeks. However, however long it takes for Haynes King to be able to recover, but uh, these guys are saying he's a gamer and they're saying that he's mentally there and he's mentally tough and he's ready to lead this football team. So uh, that's the thing that I'm most looking forward to is, is how can A&M start? Can they start fast? Because we all know Calzada came in last week and it was a little rough at first mm -hmm. and it, it got better as the game went on, but certainly uh, you know, not that this is a get right game for A&M because they're two and oh so far, but in a way it's a get right game for me for Calzada let's get this offense right. Let's make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do so that next week we're taking as much confidence into that week four matchup as possible. And let's, uh, let's look at the defense for a moment. Uh, the job Mike Elko has done at halftime, just uh, what is the feeling over there or how good that A&M defense is? Yeah, you know, we've been breaking down tape all week and Matt Stinchcomb is on the call with me as well tomorrow. He's one of the football voices that I trust the most oh, yeah. uh, in the entire world. And He's, he's been very complimentary all week of this Aggie defense. Certainly, as you said, in the second half, the adjustments that were made uh, were very obvious. And that was another thing that I talked to PV and some of the other guys about this week was, you know, what is it like playing for Coach Elko? What kind of coach is he? And they all go back to saying, you know, he's an NFL type defensive coordinator. Uh, and, you know, I always like to say, well, well what does that mean right. to you? You know, what? what do you mean when you say that? And they're like, he's got different schemes for everything. It doesn't matter what look an offense is throwing at us. He is 
calmly making those adjustments. So that way, if it's in the first half or at halftime, we're coming out there and we're knowing, okay, this is what their game plan is this week. This is what they're trying to do. And the way that Elko is able to read that and read that quickly, not only helps the defense then perform better in the second half, but of course helps those guys with that confidence that, okay, our D court is going to get us right for sure. Alyssa Lang with us here on the BCSI hotline. Alyssa, talk to me about the SEC in general right now. And, and you're through two, three weeks. I forget if anybody played in that opening week, but through a couple of weeks in now, it's very early. Do you, what, what's a surprise story that you see emerging? What, what's something that surprised you so far that you maybe didn't think you'd see uh, from, from somebody in the conference after a couple of games? Yeah, you know, it, it may be a little bit of recency bias. Uh, I saw Kentucky the first two weeks of the season. Uh, yeah. The Wildcats were, were my first two assignments against ULM and then against Missouri. And I think we were all cautiously optimistic about this new offense and Liam Cohen coming in. They got a new quarterback. They've got a transfer wide receiver from Nebraska. But how good can it really be, you know, that quickly? And And I've been pleasantly surprised at the way that not only the passing game has improved, but the way they've still been able to incorporate what they do really well, which is running the football at Kentucky. So uh, I, I think Kentucky is not that they're going to make a run at, you know, Atlanta, you know, I'm not sign ceiling delivering that, but it's also not crazy to think that if certain chips within Florida and Georgia fall in certain ways that Kentucky could potentially be up there if they continue to play the way that they are. Uh, I've been impressed with them. Ole Miss's defense, I think everyone's been impressed with the one-year turnaround that they seem to have made. Now, it'll obviously be different when they get into a, a tougher conference schedule, uh, but from what we've seen so far, the improvement seems to be stark. Arkansas, I will say, is not necessarily a surprise. I feel like I've always been high on this Arkansas Sam Pittman team, certainly since he's gotten there. Uh, beating Texas, I think, surprised a lot of people outside of the SEC. I think all of yeah. us within the conference knew that this was a dirty team that uh, isn't to be messed with necessarily anymore. But uh, those are those are three programs that I've been certainly impressed with as we've started the season. Uh, to follow up, by the way, David, how in the heck, guys, is a is, uh, Kentucky not ranked. It's ridiculous. It blows my mind. Go ahead. It's but. a joke. Yeah. It's a joke. If you watch football <laughs> and you watch what teams look like while they're playing the sport that you're polling, right. you can't watch these games and not have them as one of the 25 best teams in college football. No, I agree. Hey, Alyssa, how do you – I'm curious on your creative process because you do the studio host gig during the week. You do the sideline reporting, how you get ready for the – because there are two different roles and you're talking about covering Kentucky the last couple of weeks and now switching it. To a and how do you prepare? What's your creative process? Uh, my creative process is a lot of espresso. Uh, my <laughs> espresso machine gets a lot of uh, a lot of work during the week, but uh, no, I, I really, you know, I go day by day with with our studio shows. I've got an hour show on Tuesday and an hour show on Wednesday, and, and they're very different shows. So SEC Now is more news and information. We're breaking down tape from the weekend before. Uh, and then out of pocket on Wednesday night is more of, okay, let's wrap up the weekend in a more casual way, do some coaching interviews and look ahead to the next week. So uh, doing those shows, I will say, definitely helps me because typically wherever I'm going, we're talking about one of those programs on one of those shows. So uh, that helps. But you know, I, I start pretty early. So when I got back from Kentucky on Sunday morning, I start reading news clippings from Texas A&M's game uh, against Colorado on Saturday. I start watching Jimbo's post-game press conferences, things like that. I try to really just consume as much as I can from, from you guys and all the great local reporters here in College Station. Uh, watch as much film as I can throughout the week until we get to those meetings. So yesterday, uh, I ran through a bunch of player meetings, so I had some time, you know, between shows to come up with some of those questions uh, more creatively. I will say that I and I tell guys this: I stalk their Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a big Instagram stalker. I, I believe it was Jalen Weidermeyer who has a puppy who he loves, uh, yeah. which I learned on his Instagram page, Benzo. Um, so very excited to talk to him about things like that, which. Uh, I think make a great broadcast because I think the more you can get to know players off the field, it, it makes it better when they succeed on the field for sure. So I try to do as much digging as I can on those guys throughout the week. 
Um, and I wish you could see my notebook, all the questions <laughs> I have prepared for Jimbo and Coach Elko later on today. Um, but it, it's definitely a process. It doesn't stop, though, all the way up till kickoff. I'm still scrolling Twitter, making sure that we're all up to date on everything. The reason I asked that is uh, I caught a clip that you posted on Twitter the other day, and I'm going to ask Billy, is a hot dog a sandwich? I saw that with Lane Kiffin, <laughs> Alyssa, and I say no, and here's why I say no. I understand the whole concept of it's a, it's a, a piece of meat inside of bread. Right. Therefore, you know, by definition, you want to call it a sandwich. But name me one person in the history of mankind that has said, I'm in the mood for a sandwich and a goes dog. out to get a hot dog. Never happened. And name one time where you have a craving for a hot dog and you go get a sandwich or name one ball game you're ever at where you go, you know what I want right now is a good club. <laughs> you want a hot dog. There, there is a distinct difference between what they are. I get it why you would say it's a sandwich, but to me it's just not. Yeah, You don't go to Subway yeah. for a hot dog. You yeah. don't. You also don't put ketchup on a sandwich. I don't, I'm trying to think of a sandwich that you'd put ketchup on, and that's not, I don't think there's one. Nope. You You're not wrong. I, I will <laughs> say, I was kind of off of the, the hot dog's not a sandwich, right? Like, it, it's a hot dog, right? Yeah. It's not under the sandwich tree, but you put that out on Twitter, certainly with Lane Kiffin, and hundreds of people reply to it. And a couple of people did make a really good point that at a lot of restaurants on the menu, whether it's posted or on a paper menu, hot dogs will be under the sandwich category and i have seen that before like that's not that's not all the way out of left field like when i when i read that on twitter i sat back and i was like that person's not wrong maybe this changes everything now you're in my <laughs> head because now i'm going to start paying attention to that. i've never noticed that but this is like is is a uh what is it is a tomato that's technically not a vegetable is that what they try to claim no, I think tomato is definitely in the vegetable. Department. There's some. There's some. Hot tomatoes were fruit. Yeah. See? Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Tomatoes exactly. Are fruit. Did, did that change? No, that's been always a thing. Tomato <laughs> is allegedly a fruit. That's not a fruit. It's, it's a, a veggie. Veg but fruit, fruit, <laughs> fruit tastes good and it's sweet and it tastes like dessert. All right. So uh, oh, there's my there's my thing for fruit. Can you put it in a dessert? And the answer on a tomato is hell no. No, you can't. So it's not a fruit, but it is. Hey, apparently. Alyssa, speaking of fruit, I have to ask, how often are you asked about the banana thing? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, like, way, way too often. I honestly, you know, we went into that game, and I knew that it was a possibility that I was going to do it. It was ULM. You know, we always try to plan some more fun things for the second half if it's a, if it's a game that we think could get out of hand. And um I thought that since it already had its day on Twitter, like it had already been on Good Morning America or whatever it was with Will Levis and everyone had already made a big deal out of it, that Kentucky fans would just laugh and say, okay, ha ha ha, we've won someone how to eat a banana. But then it blows up again. And I'm like, okay, this is cool, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I did it because it really wasn't that bad. And, and now I can say that everyone who reacts and gags and pretends they're throwing up is exaggerating because it really wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, the best part, though, was when I came back to Lexington the next week. I'm not kidding you when I say this. Every building that I walked into in Lexington, somebody said something to me about the bananas. So I walk up to the rental car counter. The guy goes, any bananas this week? I go pick up some dinner when I get to the hotel. Any bananas this week? I check in at the hotel. You're the banana girl, right? So it was like, okay. Um, if I knew that this would have been my legacy, I would have done it four years ago when I first got here easily. <laughs> Why not get embrace it early? I don't know. Maybe you have some fans in Colorado because what I couldn't understand last week is there was a section behind the a and bench of about, 50, I'd say, 30 fans dressed as bananas. Oh, is that so, right? So, listen, I oh. think they're waiting on your arrival there in, in uh, well, Boulder. Or Denver, or wherever. Yeah. Hey, Alyssa, we appreciate you joining the show. Hope to do it again. Thank you guys so much. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow. All right. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Right now, time to talk about Millican Reserve, a farm-to-table community in College Station. They've got the homes. they got the trails. They've got the farms, and they got the wide open spaces. If you just like nature... That's where you go. You can live there, you can farm there, or you can just go hang out there, guys. Uh, I, I love the veggies. My wife picks them up every week. It is so, so good and just uh, just so fresh out there. 2,600 acres of open spaces, farms, 30 miles of trails and homes. They are incredible out there, without a doubt. And I'll tell you, um, that neighborhood out there is beautiful. Nothing like a typical subdivision. They're based entirely on the Brazos Valley landscape and heritage, closely linked land, 
deep Texas roots. There's no other place like Millican Reserve. You want to go check it out at MillicanReserve.com. And as a reminder, their annual Pumpkin Palooza returns October 16th and 17th. Check out the information at MillicanReserve.com. You're listening to The Zone. The Zone. 11.50 a.m. Sports Radio. 93.7 FM. Maroon U is your ultimate stop for brand name apparel, gifts, and accessories for the entire family. From Columbia, 47 brand, Yeti, Dooney and Burke, and Adidas. We're able to outfit you for every occasion. Visit Maroon U and our family of companies on Holloman Drive and College Station to shop the latest in brand name Aggie merchandise. Shop Maroon U today. Voted best in the Brazos, best gift shop since 2016. Maroon never looks so good with Maroon U. Does your bank know your first name? At Normandy State Bank, they do. Normandy State Bank is locally owned, controlled, and operated. This local personal touch means banking decisions are made on site the same day you request it. Normandy State makes banking easy. They're open Saturdays, offer state-of-the-art online banking, bill paying, fund transfers, check and statement images. Normandy State, where customer service is their priority. Normandy State Bank, rock solid. Member FDIC. Hello, St. Joseph Eagles fans. Listen to St. Joseph Eagles football throughout the season on KEDC 88.5 FM. St. Joseph Eagles football is brought to you this season by these local businesses. Jason Bienski Realtor, Lone Star Roof Systems, Law Office of Jeff Paradowski, Krause Paint and Body, Wings and More, Flynn College, and Surf Pro of the Brazos Valley. Listen to St. Joseph Eagles football on KEDC 88.5 FM. Special thanks to all of our St. Joseph Eagle football sponsors. You have the right to know. The right to know about culture. The right to know about the economy. The right to know about technology and to know about sports. You have the right to know about education and politics and the weather. You have the right to know what's happening abroad and in your backyard. But above all else, you have the right to know that this right is under attack and we must work to protect it. Because in order to be free, we must be informed. Understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. You can hear the Paul Feinbaum Show weekdays 2 to 4 here on The Zone. Presented by Polaris Fun Center. Paul Feinbaum is is SEC country. And and Aggieland is SEC country too. Join Paul weekdays 2 to 4 here on The Zone. Polaris Fun Center sells and service Polaris ATVs, Rangers, Razors, Global Electric Cars, and the Polaris Slingshot. Polaris Fun Center, where they sell and service fun, not tractors. The voice of the SEC. And you can hear Paul Feinbaum weekdays 2 to 4 here on The Zone. Tech Radio presented by David Garner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. By the way, if you want to text the show on the AMB text line, you can. A call station branch of the Amarillo National Bank, Good Texas Banking. The website is amb.com. Earlier, you heard me talking about the Association of Former Students. And our good friend Lexi Hudson is in the house. Good morning to you, Lexi. It's it's weird to be back over here and, and be in a totally different uh, position, <laughs> but it's good to see y'all. Good to see you. I heard you uh, had a little fun at the Colorado game and... Stop by our tailgate, right? Yeah, well, I walked right by it. I was like, I'm going to go party there in about <laughs> five minutes. And then an hour went by when I was still lost. It didn't happen. But uh, I know that you guys had a great uh, showing out there. Yes, we had a really good turnout from the pictures. There there was a ton of people, and it was a big hit. So we were super excited. And Midnight Yell out there was I mean, amazing from what I'm hearing from our team that went and all the visitors and everything. But this tomorrow, or tonight, actually, we have – Six VIP Midnight Yell Passes that we're going to go ahead and give away like we did a few weeks ago. Um, first six people, David, what yeah. do you say? Yeah, six, six people, people to come we... up to Tech Sags? So you show up to Tech Sags, you're one of the first six, you can get hooked up. That's what's up. Why are you guys so nice to us? It's just how we do it over at the Association of Former Students. We, pr- <laughs> we appreciate that. I think we, um, let's do that here and hopefully th- don't come at midnight. Come soon, guys, because we don't want to have Dalton working here all night. Uh, Lexi, thank you for coming in, as you always do. Of course. We're happy to help. Appreciate you. Now it's time for Around Aggieland, presented by Normandy State Bank. Normandy State Bank, rock solid banking. Check them out at normandystatebank.com. Young Richard Zane is upstairs with a great-looking shot. Hello, Richard. Hola, papi. Okay, that's awkward. It's always it's always good to follow a legend <laughs> like Lexi Hudson, let me tell you. Yes, it it's is. It sounds like you're like in a truck. Like I hear like cars. The window uh, open or something? I don't. 
I don't know what's going on. It might be my mic. Okay. Something might be messed up with it, but all good. Right, I'll take you guys around at you in real quick. On Monday, it was announced that Jaden Peavy was the SEC's defensive player of the week. He had seven tackles, five solos, two TFLs, and a pick in A&M's 10-7 win over Colorado. A&M will take on New Mexico tomorrow or tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. kick on the SEC Network. A&M 29 and a half point favorites. The other football, soccer, A&M's 4-2-1. and one. They begin SEC play tonight against Kentucky and Lexington. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. Central Time on the SEC Network Plus. And then on Sunday, they'll be back in College Station for the Turn It Gold game against number nine, Pepperdine. That kicks off at Ellis Field at 1.30 p.m. Central Time, streaming on the SEC Network Plus. Of course, Turn It Gold match. They'll be wearing special maroon and gold kits, and they'll be auctioning those at off after the match, all the proceeds going to the Turn It Gold Fund to raise awareness and research money for the uh, fight against childhood cancer. Volleyball news, A&M won their sixth consecutive match on Tuesday, taking down Texas State 3 nothing. Morgan Christian, 14 kills. Camille Connor, 35 assists. Tonight, though, they'll, taste, they'll face the top-ranked Texas Longhorns at Reed Arena. That match starts at 6 o'clock p.m. You won't want to miss it if you're already in town for a football weekend. Women's golf news, some great women's golf news. Blanca Fernandez Garcia Poggio won the Sam Golden Invitational first championship of her collegiate career. She shot a program record 14 under on the weekend. That's the first win of the uh, Garrett Chadwell era in Aguiland. And then on the men's side, Sam Bennett finished one stroke off the lead, finishing third in the Merido Collegiate Invitational. The Aggies as a team finishing uh, sixth in an absolutely loaded field up in Carrollton. Baseball news, you saw the SEC has announced the uh, regular season schedule for the 2022 season, so there's a lot. You can check that out on TechSags as well. Jim Schlossnagel getting another verbal commitment from Evan Ashenbach. And then in basketball news, uh, Buzz Williams has announced that Wabisa Beatty has joined his program as a program aide. And then Henry Coleman and Kadasha Hoppy will represent the SEC's Basketball Leadership Council this uh, season. Eighth thing Mo being named, shocking, right? An AAU James E. Sullivan Award finalist. And then Equestrians got a, a scrimmage today at Hildebrand Equine Complex, 3 o'clock start for you. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate it. Tech Sags Radio presented by Dave Garner's Jewelers. Hour number three next. You're listening. You're listening to Aguiland. Only all sports station. The Zone, 11.50 a.m. and 93.7 FM. My name is Bobby. I'm a veteran and lost my leg to a roadside bomb. My victory was going from a wheelchair to becoming a weightlifting champion. I'm Sam. I'm a veteran. My victory was finding a career I can be proud of and supporting my family. America's veterans are on their most important tour, the tour of their lives. I'm a veteran. My victory was going from homeless to home. At DAV, we're on a mission to help veterans get the benefits they've earned. I'm a veteran, and my victory was finishing my education. DAV offers veterans of all generations a lifetime of support for victories great and small. My victory was proving that disability is not a limitation. My victory was getting my service dog a new best friend. We help more than a million veterans every year as they face and conquer their challenges. My victory is being able to be there for my family. When America's veterans win, we all win. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Like us on Facebook at Zone1150. Follow us on Twitter at Zone1150. Get connected now. Get connected now. Now. With the Zone1150 AM and 93.7 FM. This is KZNE College Station. Brian. WTAW, I'm Chelsea Reber with a news update on The Zone. A man in his 50s is the most recent coronavirus death in Brazos County. The health district reports of the 303 total pandemic deaths, one person was vaccinated. More information is online at brazoshealth.org. More than 135 nonprofits turned out yesterday afternoon to kick off the third annual Brazos Valley Gives campaign. Early giving starts Sunday, September 19th, which is the Sunday 
and you can start telling your donors that it's available and from September 19th and October 19th. There is one prize that's an early giving prize, which will kind of add up in total, and that's a, that's a very fun incentive. Co-chair Molly Watson says this year's goal is $750,000. The 18-hour day of giving is Tuesday, October 19th. More information is online at BrazosValleyGives.org. Brian Mayor Andrew Nelson has announced the city receiving an $11,000 matching grant from the Texas Historical Commission. The grant is for a monument assessment at Grandview and the Freedmen's area of the Bryan City Cemetery. This is close to 2,300 graves on these two sites. It's a big part of our history and our cultural heritage. This follows a recent historical marker being placed at Grandview Cemetery. A federal judge accuses Texas leaders of failing to act on her orders to fix chronic neglect in the foster care system. It's the latest development as the state struggles to implement reforms Judge Janice Graham Jack ordered as she presides over a 2011 class action lawsuit against Family and Protective Services alleging children were held in unsafe conditions. The agency commissioner acknowledged that caseworkers are not adequate for the tasks they're assigned. The number of foster children has hovered around 400 since June. The judge says she wants to coordinate with the plaintiffs and the state to find solutions, but would like the governor's blessing before proceeding. Chris Summer, TSN News. And I'm Chelsea Reber on The Zone. Are you looking for a job? Join the Bryan College Station Chamber of Commerce and Workforce Solutions Brazos Valley for the Chamber's annual job fair on October the 5th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Brazos Center. Visit with companies hiring right here in Bryan College Station. For more information, visit bcschamber.org or call 979-260-5200. That's 979-260-5200. Once again, the Chamber's job fair is on October the 5th. We have trucks, yes, at Tom White Chevrolet. We have the cars, trucks, and SUVs you want today. New, used, and certified pre-owned. We have more stock coming in daily, and we won't be beat on price. And if you need quick cash, we are buying cars even if you don't buy from us. All roads lead to Tom White Chevrolet and Bryan College Station. Chevy, buy new roads. More details at TomWhite.com. Tom White Chevrolet. Good morning, sports fans. I'm Zach Taylor with your Aggie Sports Minute on The Zone. This Sports Minute is brought to you by Hill Cometa Roofing and Supply. Call 936-825-0500 or click hillcosupply.com. Seventh-ranked Texas A&M football returns home tomorrow to host New Mexico at Kyle Field. Now, one player looking to sure things up this week is quarterback Zach Calzada, who struggled a bit in the 10-7 win over Colorado However, Coach Jimbo Fisher says he's seen improvement. I thought this week he's practiced really well. And that's not me. That's not coach talk. I thought today he was exceptional. We'll hope we'll continue it and we'll call the right plays and play well around him. But we'll grow, and there's a lot of growing things in there. But there's a lot of want to, and there's a lot of ability. He can throw the football. We'll see what Calzada does tomorrow when the Ags entertain the Lobos at 11 a.m. Broadcast will be right here on The Zone. Out on the volleyball court, it's a Lone Star showdown tonight at Reed as Texas A&M welcomes top-ranked Texas to town. Coach Bird Kuhn on the rivalry. It's awesome for them to be coming here. We kind of started working on that when we took this, the job together. We talked, and that's something I wanted to set up, and now obviously they're coming into the SEC, so it'll be natural. But it's going to be a big match. Every match is a big match for us, but it's always nice to be home. And it's a football weekend, so I think there'll be great energy. First serve between the Aggies and Longhorns is tonight at 6 o'clock at Reed. By the way, that's also the same time that 15th-ranked Aggie soccer kicks off its SEC slate at Kentucky. And that's been your Aggie Sports Minute, brought to you by Hillcom Metal Roofing and Supply. On The Zone, I'm Zach Taylor. Our publications reach every corner of the Brazos Valley, and we want to partner with you in sharing your message with the community. You may recognize a few of our Bryan Broadcasting publications. Best of the Brazos Valley. Brazos Life, the annual manual. Welcome home, Brazos Valley. Brazos Family. Brazos Wellness. Brazos Valley Bride. Peace, Brazos Christian Life. With the combined power of seven magazine titles, 11 radio stations, and digital solutions, Bryan Broadcasting Publications can help you be heard. Call 979-695-695. 9595 to learn more.
Tech Sags Radio. Got to turn on the mic when I'm here at the Social Center. I'll be giving you guys updates throughout the show. Anytime Billy asks for a headline or a text message, I got you here on the AMB text line. It's time for the final countdown. And for the first time since we've been doing the show on YouTube, we're going to do all three hours. Well, we've done it one other time, but with the final countdown, Steve, Seth McKinney in the house, Billy obviously here as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about getting ready for this New Mexico game. I know Billy and Steve got to speak a little bit yesterday. Seth, I'll start with you, man. Just some thoughts heading into this New Mexico game. Yeah, my thought is that I just got slandered on this podcast by these two <laughs> not slander. Without me even around, I'd be shown more couth by a band of Laosh and pirates than my, my old best friend. <laughs> Listen here, Torno. That was not slander. It was slander. We were pointing out the fact that me and Lucci were sharing You sent text a meme, messages. and I had no idea. You had, had no, no idea, idea. That who the head coach of Tennessee was. He goes, hi, Paul, what is, is he the – Coach of Vanderbilt or something? This is I didn't know this. <laughs> Big how, how can deal. you not be? It, I don't for that. care about Hypo. I you haven't care. seen. You haven't seen his face. It's well, not how about, can you? It's miss not even his about face. caring. It's just about having just basic knowledge of the SEC and what's going on oh with your opponents. I care. I care, which, I care deeply about Texas A&M. All right? This is where Seth says. Now, can I read it? Yeah, Steve? read it. I don't care. There's a picture, and Seth sends it. So you or no, Steve, Steve sent the sends the picture of all the SEC coaches, Nuno, and kind of what they would be doing. Have you seen that the, uh, one? With their jobs, yes. Pretty yeah. good. What they would like be a, he's like a Chick-fil-A manager or no, something. No, Hypel, yeah, Hypel is a I don't know, high school booster club okay. president. <laughs> that one's great. And you go, <laughs> so Seth goes, Hypel, holy smokes, where is he, Vanderbilt? <laughs> And Steve says, Tennessee, nerd. And Seth goes, wow, head coach with a question mark. Which, again, what did you think they just were putting random assistance in? I don't know. Steve goes, yes, where have you been? And Seth goes, I guess daydreaming. That's wild. It is wild. I don't care about Tennessee or high Did you know okay? he was even a head coach? I knew he was. I thought he was, like, still at Florida you, somewhere. Okay, Central, yeah, Florida. Central Florida. Florida somewhere. Dude, it's high pool. I do not okay, care. Okay, now have you seen him lately? Yes, Put, I have. His face is great. Hey, Dalton, show that picture again of high pool. He's kind of. He does have a great face. He's had a hell well, of a that's, run. That's, 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 a, very, guy that's beat, a flattering hey, face That there. guy beat you at quarterback. <laughs> he did. And you know why? Because Christian couldn't tackle him. Uh, well, that guy ran so circles around Christian and Lonnie <laughs> and, and Evan it. Peroni if he even got on the field. And what they did was they probably saw Lonnie chasing that guy around and said, you know what, you're going to move you to tight end. <laughs> oh, Lonnie. Okay, yeah. back to it. All right, so can we, can we, can we, can we what? Talk, can we what? Can, can we let him go? I Hold mean, on. I just want to know what we think about New Mexico. Yeah, can that's we, right. Can we start with Seth? New Mexico, I'm excited. Doubt he knows who the quarterback is. <laughs> Who's their head coach? The so. guy, yeah, he transferred, this guy. Danny Gonzalez. Okay, how about that? So, anyways, I'm more worried about what a and is going to do, not so much about New Mexico and the fact of the matter of us going out there. I think Calzada is going to step up and play, a, obviously, a much better game than he did on uh, last Saturday in, in Denver, which was a good trip, by the way. That was fun. Yeah, should have gone. Yeah, nice I saw pictures of you and Lucci up there touring the mountainside. It was Red Rock. No, oh, is that what that is? Red Rock. Well, Boulder. the mountains as well. Yeah, it's like a, just some weird. Mountain. And um, yeah, so it's going to be a, a much better performance. We're going to get right for for Arkansas the following week, and that's all this game is about, really. I got no stress on this game. We should blow them out. I'll go ahead and make my pick to cover right now, and yeah, I, save I, us some time. I know, right? Good. But it's it, it, I'm excited to see them get momentum. Look crisp is all you need to do. Look crisp and go out there and dominate this team, and, and that'll cure a lot of hills <laughs> as we roll into uh, mm. Arkansas. Always the optimist. <laughs> what, do you want me to be negative? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to be negative. It's just the, it was his first game last week. Yeah, what? Yeah, I, guess my, I guess my <clears throat> take would be what, what did you see last year or last week that gives you this optimism? <laughs> Well, what I honestly, I'm not trying to look. You know me. I'm not trying to put on the maroon colored glasses fully. I've got a tent. I've got a maroon tent, as we all know. <laughs> we all do. All right. And, but last week, he, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. I'm not sitting here trying to say he played great, but I'm hopeful that the fact of the matter is, is that he was like truly, truly, truly like a deer in headlights, man, just frozen out there. There were delay of games everywhere, it looked messy. But I'll say this, and what gives me hope is that the last eight minutes or so of that fourth quarter, he did look a lot better. 
Yeah. And we did start executing for whatever reason, and it just looked smoother, maybe calm down, whatever. And hopefully that's the calzada that we get that, uh, tomorrow and that we'll get against Arkansas and as we, that we'll get the remainder of the season until whatever happens mm-hmm. happens with – Haynes and him. Steve, why are you grilling him? I know, dude. It was like, man, I was like, you got an agenda? It's like turning him just... into your own personal McGriddle. <laughs> personal. They <laughs> call me McGriddle. So, I agree with what Seth's saying. And, and I know this, that's why I'm laughing because I know you do too. But there are, it's, it's funny because there are reasons, guys, for concern. As it's one game until Arkansas, it's not like it's, you got two games and three full weeks of practice to prep for them. You, this is it. They they mm-hmm. have to make significant improvements. And to me, yeah, Calzada did encourage me with the whole fourth quarter. Yeah, not just the last eight minutes because you remember he fumbled that ball was around the, I think the well, ten okay, minute mark or whatever was it was. But it, it, yeah. they, they had two drives in the fourth and they went up and down. And really also in that little drill right before halftime, they went down there and got a field goal, and that had a lot to do with Zach, too. So he certainly got better as the game went along, and this is a thing, and we heard Alyssa Lang talk about it. I've written and talked about it. They have had a great week of practice offensively. Uh, The offense, and and it's been really good. And maybe it's because Jimbo's changed some things, and maybe they're executing those things better. I don't know. I want to watch where I want to see them play better this week, and I need to see them play better, or in two areas, in my opinion. Tackling the quarterback, they got better. They, they shut it down in Colorado, but for a half, yeah, the they, zone didn't, read, yeah. they didn't do it great. And that's what New Mexico does. It's been right? a little bit of an issue for A&M in the past, and it's what New Mexico – well, they've been Just throwing it extent. with Terry Wilson, but that guy can flat out run. He runs like a wide receiver. But I'm talking about for next week Mm -hmm. and K.J. Jefferson. And I'm also talking about offensive line. I have to see. And I'm still not sold that Layden Robinson will play. You guys guys played the position. I'll tell you, I'm hoping he takes the week off. Okay. Well, you saw – yeah, you saw him limping around, laboring. So, it might not even be the the same O-line. It might be a a shakeup. Yeah. And if he doesn't play, what do you do? What you're going to have to do is slide Kenny Green into guard. Well, that, so and that's the argument, right? Do you want to give him more right, work at tackle, at game experience, or do you want to move him? There isn't another guard I would not, to go in and play If right it was now. me, if I was the offensive line coach, the last thing I would want to do is, is shuffle guys' positions. Right. I I'd agree. I'd rather f- plug and play with the next guy I up. I agree, but who's it. the next guy up at guard right now? I mean, I don't know. You don't know it'd be that. probably you somebody. It'd probably Matthews, be another. Bankhead, it'd probably be another Chibozo. true freshman. Yeah, a true freshman. It doesn't matter. Put yeah. somebody in there. That's I, think, my I think they'll He's shuffle like, a little. You really, you and really if they did, mess. I want to see some Reuben Fathery at tackle yes. because I think as the season goes on, Nuno, he's the talent that, that could kind of – if he hits that point. Like, it took Jake Matthews until midseason. People forget that. Luke started the whole right. year as a freshman. Mm-hmm. Jake came in around the time – I think they played Kansas after they'd lost a couple games. He actually, I think, started – right when Tannehill started playing. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden the whole thing kind of came together a few yeah. games later. So if Deuce Fathery can become that guy and then Kenyon can play. Hey, I I'm, think, I'm rooting for that because Kenyon, like, he, he's, he's, he's only tackle. out there because he's a great athlete. Yeah. He's a, he's a guard. We yeah. all know that. And, and a badass guard. Oh, I know. Yeah. Hey, right? there, yeah, guy. absolutely. If I was him, my NFL position would I would want to be guard if I was him. Yeah, yeah. he's going to do a lot better at the next level right. inside than he's he a guard. So if fathery and can through. develop, and, and it might be trainer and fathery if they have to play this week because trainer's the veteran. But if fathery can kind of come on, then all of a sudden I think you get this great situation at guard. And which of the two guards is playing the best? So now you've got if if Kenyon's you got two really strong guards, and then Bryce as the season goes on, thinks going to be really strong at center. You might look up and and go, man, this is a pretty dominant interior. Yeah, it's a long way off, but it. I think just they if they wanted to, if they wanted to do that, that's fine, and like long term. But if they're going to keep Kenyon out there long term, then he needs to play it. But mm-hmm. if there is yeah. any inkling that he might move in even later in the season, do it. Do it now, especially against New Mexico. Well, to you know, get work. Moving off, moving off that subject real quick. I mean, the thing I would like to see 
this weekend and I expect to see because we've been in these situations, right? Seth and I, where you got a new quarterback coming in. Mm -hmm. The coach in these in these type of games, what he's doing is he's challenging everybody else, every other position group. He's yeah. challenging them to step up and help your quarterback. Mm -hmm. Last week, I didn't see that. The offensive line, we couldn't move the ball yeah. in the middle. Yeah, Receivers are dropping balls, hitting their hands. Not getting open. Not getting open. The defense did their job. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I, they stood, they yeah. stepped up that week. But this week is I'd when you want to see your, the backs your skill guys. stepped up in the fourth quarter yeah, and kind of saved the they, day. No doubt they made some plays, and we, that's what it took to win the game. And Calzada made some, threw some dimes there. At yeah, the end. Yeah. There's no doubt. He had to, unfortunately. But I want to see some <laughs> receivers. I want to see the line get movement, play cleaner. Mesh up better in their double teams. Get some movement up front. Backs got to hit the holes. They got to. They got to. They got to see the spots that are coming open on the right. counters and stuff. But the receivers got to make some plays. They got to get more Absolutely. separation. That was one of the most. And give your quarterback things. a chance. Give your quarterback a chance. When he's David, struggling. do you need Seth? Uh, he looks like he's got enough coffee for the four of us. Yeah. Do you need some of it? Because I, I know you're sitting over there asleep. I need a refill. <laughs> hey, uh, I did yeah. want to ask Seth, how was it being a Billy's photographer there at Red Rocks? I saw a lot of like glamour good. shots. I had to like taken. retake 18 feet. He's like, a, he's like a teenage girl over there. No, nope, no, this is wrong. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. You're right. Because you know what? You get shamed on social media. It's got to be perfect. I mean, I don't use filters, but I feel like I'd ha I need to use like like filters or something. Does he like soften, zoom in at every like angle to soften my features? Check there's nothing he can be made fun um, of for. Uh, I, by the way, I took pictures of Seth too. I just oh. didn't post them. Okay. It was definitely like you know girls on the beach. Um, <laughs> I was talking to a, a, and everybody's. I know where the joke's gonna go. Is how old was she's? Unfortunately, she's like thirty. But I was, which is, I'm saying is too old for this. Unfortunately, I was talking to this girl the other day, and she old. was. Tell, I said, "What are you up to?" She's like, "Oh, I'm just looking up like beach poses." Uh, she was going to Mexico. What the? I'm like, "What do you mean you're looking up?" Poses? She's like, "I'm for for like Instagram and stuff." And I was like, "Are you kidding?" She goes. Everybody does it, Billy. Like you're, and I go, no, I, I really don't think they do. I think that's you and your group. I don't think <sighs> never most in my life. thirty year olds are freaking practicing this is beach poses like to do your arm like this. Or, <laughs> you know, like I don't think people are doing. <laughs> you know, there is there is the option to just not post stuff. Like we don't all need to but see Seth every and I, freaking second. Well, you're, or, speak, you're speaking you to a couple a people in this company. Yeah, or you're just taking a picture. You just. Smile, You're speaking to a, a certain couple people that work here, and none of them are in this room right now. But they think they need to share every moment hey, every, of life. Every moment. Quit sub radio. Here's my dessert. Call them out. Sub, sub Call radio. them out. Sub radio. <laughs> hey, let's do this. Let's hit a break, uh, and uh, we'll come back. I do want to talk a little bit more about the wide receivers and make fun of each other a little bit more. But right now, a moment for our friends at Caldwell. figuring it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. You know. <laughs> The, the TV guy takes over, and every once in a while, the, the uh, sophomoric humor comes back in. All right, moment for our friends at Caldwell Country Chevrolet. Billy knows this. Right now, Zach Hester's doing push-ups and selling cars. That's what he's doing. And he's helping you with customer service. That guy, he does during the day for, for like, uh, He works out fun. at 4 a.m. He told me he goes to the pool and gets to swim in before. All right, that's yeah, the kind of. Yeah, he gets it out of the way. And, and then and, he sells cars but, and services cars. And he's doing it all. And he's going to give you a good deal, but he's probably drinking a protein shake during the process. And takes care of customers yeah, like no other. And creatine. By the way, but yes, he is uh, number one when it comes to that. All those guys there at Caldwell Country Chevrolet, they're so, so good at that. They've got the pre-owned vehicles. They've got uh, the top dollar. So if you're trying to get rid of your car, that's the place to go to. You're trying to get a new car, that's the place to go to. The best customer service around. It's not far away. 15 minutes to get there from Brian to Caldwell. Just a short conversation away, but you'll see the difference when you step on the lot and you start doing business with Zach and the fellas. It is Caldwell Country Chevrolet, Highway 21 in Caldwell, and online at Caldwell countrychevrolet.com This is the Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. For nearly two decades, TechSags has been the number one Aggie sports group online, and thanks to that passionate community, we've been able to grow it into so much more. TechSags is now an industry-leading media company that covers Aggie football, basketball, baseball, and recruiting like nobody else. Our staff of over 30 consistently delivers in-depth analysis, X's and O's, award-winning video content, and the most reliable insider information you can find. So if you love the Ags, come check us out. Become a premium subscriber at TechSags.com slash subscribe. 
If you own construction equipment and need custom hydraulic hoses, get 10% off at WPI. WPI also has the best price in town for DEF at $8.50 for two and a half gallons. Regardless of your machine's maker model, WPI can help from O-rings and teeth, buckets and blades. Any part for every brand of equipment is at your local WPI. Visit Jesse James at WPI's new location in Bryan, Highway 21 East at Marino Road, or click WPI.com. Aggie football is here, and Texas A&M Transportation Services offers parking and shuttle options. Pay $25 cash to park near Bush Library, Bonfire Memorial, or Agronomy Road. Ride the free downtown Bryan shuttle. For pre- and post-game traffic and parking info, or to purchase parking before the game, visit Destination Aggieland within the TAMU app, download the Park Mobile app, or visit transport.tamu.edu slash football. For those parking with an annual permit, be ready to show us your permit barcode printed on paper or on your smartphone screen. Follow us on Twitter at Get to Aggie Game. The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. Thanks to our listeners and our Aggie broadcast sponsors, Park at Tradition's Exceptional Senior Living, First Financial Bank, and Cooper's Barbecue. Here's a big gig to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7 FM. Today, millions of people all across America are building a life in recovery from addiction and mental illness, helping themselves and helping each other with friends, family, and community lending their strength and support. Join the Voices for Recovery. Together, we are stronger. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders, for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Game day on the zone starts three hours before kickoff with the Twin Peaks pregame show, and it's powered by TexAgs.com. Game day on the zone is brought to you in part by Gage Gandy Bill Bonds, Bobcat of the Brass Valley, Tradition Mobile One Loop, and Frontier Communication. After listening into the pregame show, you can hear every Aggie football game, home road national championship, right here on Sports Radio 1150 and 93.7 FM. Welcome back to the show. Tech Sags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. Here in the Rollo Insurance Studio, if you want to text the AMB text line, you can do that at 979-693-1150. You can also call the BCSI hotline. We'd appreciate that. 979-693-1150. It is the final countdown. Steve and Seth McKinney are in the house. Billy Lucci, obviously. I don't like leaning. I'm going to go back here. Uh, so, guys. you're not a table leaner. Well, I was kicked off the island. <laughs> or a table so, breather like Gabe. Yeah. Gabe's yeah. a table breather? He got me last night. I was at 1860. A lot of people hovering around the table. Long, long form hover. <laughs> I don't mind like a quick hover these days, but a long form hover. Yeah. I had some guy go, you know, oh, Luch, I didn't know you didn't like, you don't like close talkers. I go, I didn't like them before COVID. <laughs> right. Like, who does? I, I didn't like close, who likes a close talker? Nobody. The Nobody damn Seinfeld episode about it. So, is it Judge Reinhold? I yes. Know. yes. The, yeah. So, anyway, Gabe and Gabe, it, Megan was sitting, you know, she, she was sitting, apart. Gabe was hovering. He's a hover. He was a long form hover. <laughs> Gabe. Did he give you a hug? No. no. I don't know if Gabe, I don't know if Gabe and I have ever hugged. <laughs> okay. Because I just feel like he just kind of be like one of these. Like weird huggers? Like weird, like, like that. <laughs> For the record, we've never hugged either. An elbow hey, tapper? Hey, uh, let's, we left it at the wide receivers, guys. We were chit-chatting about that. And I also want to ask a little bit more about the line, so maybe I'll start there. How much can we correlate between Zach's success there in the fourth quarter to how well the offensive line was playing towards the end? Because it wasn't the same push early on. Yeah, and that definitely made a difference. They they were able to get some semblance of a running game going, um, moving the ball, picking up some first downs. I think that helped give Zach a little confidence, right? Because when you ha- when you feel like the whole offense is on your shoulders, you can't you can't get any yards really running the ball, and they're dependent on you to pick up every yard and every first down for a you know new starter just coming in the game that it didn't practice with the ones all week. That's got to be difficult, and that's what he basically was dealing with the first three quarters. So, um, you you saw you saw his confidence start to come alive 
when he when he finally were able to start running the football a little better. And that's what it takes. I mean, you've got to have that kind of aspect in your offense, to, especially when you've got your backup in there, is to be able to to take some pressure off the guy. And unfortunately, all the pressure was on him. Yeah. And then if you want to transition right over into receivers, I mean, I made the comment in the stands. I was like, I mean, you're, the expectation level of our quarterback, it didn't matter who was in the game at this point in time, was like mm -hmm. they had to be Peyton Manning to get the ball in there. There was no <laughs> separation so tight at all. I was just – it was maddening to see. And I don't know who to blame, but that was the case. Well, the and receivers – no space. They got to get more separation. Yeah, There's no doubt. Do. But gives credit to Colorado. They played a pretty good game defensively, I thought. And yeah. they really committed to stopping that run. I will give the them credit. that Their defensive line – They played that, well. I can't remember his – yeah, he started with a P. But anyways, uh, that guy was uh, pretty good. 99, I think. Was yeah, he's a yeah. big dude, long. Yeah. Uh, he, they said before the game, you know, just talking to people in the program, that that, 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 that Colorado D-line was going to be a test, not just in personnel. They had a lot of veterans, and Landman's a first-team all-pack 12 pick, and boy, did he look like, especially when you don't get to him on the second level and he just mm -hmm. runs free. But yeah. Uh, they said before the game that that, that was going to be a test, and, and and I think people inside the program knew it. Um, you, obviously, you still want to go out and execute and put up yards and points more so than they did, but it wasn't a secret. And I had some people over there compare them to like a Mississippi State D line in terms of how they play, and you guys will understand that. You know, just getting up the field, yeah. all mm -hmm. four of them getting up the field. You penetrating know, defense. Penetrating. Yeah. Not trying to read. Of, yeah, and that, a lot of havoc. And them in Mississippi State, they, that was a comparison that was made even prior to the game. And then afterwards, I think, you know, they're sitting there going, that, that's a, that wasn't what you would call an elite right. level SEC D-line, but it was certainly, the, it, it would compare to a lot of the ones they play in the conference. And mm -hmm. what is elite that a and going to play this year along the defensive front? It's yeah. Alabama, probably LSU in terms of talent. Right. But I don't know that they – Mississippi State might be the third best right. defensive front they but see. But it doesn't matter because they have – they may not have Alabama-level talent, but they have good talent, and they were playing like their hair was on fire. Yeah, they were. You could tell they were playing inspired. We were kind of – looked like going through the motions a little bit, yeah. taking our time getting up for the yeah. game. They came out fired up from play were, one. Man. And once they had some success early, it just cranked it all the way up to another level. You know, I how thought, does that happen, by the way? How do you come into a game not prepared? You guys have played. You, I'm sure you're thinking in your mind, I'm going 100%. But how does that not happen at the start of a game? Well, I can say that Colorado probably felt the disrespect just because of the spread. They're probably, you know, this was their game of the, of the offseason, right? This is probably what they worked for all season. Hey, go prove yourself, SEC team. They're going to come in top, top five, five team. in Denver. The crowd was right. The crowd was hype. It was it was a great atmosphere for them. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I it was a a very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tra it was definitely game. a trap game for us. But for them, they were they were like, we're gonna beat them. It's, the crowd was in it, and unfortunately, we didn't do anything to stop that. Here's the what the crowd I'm gonna, was in it again from play one, and we let them in it till the end of the third quarter. Here's what I'm gonna say, David. And Steve, I thought you were going to go after him for like, sometimes you don't show up. You can't do it every single week. Well, I had, I had a point I was going to make. Oh, go ahead. I, well, like I was just going to say, it, it reminded me very similar to how we used to play Texas Tech back in the day up in Lubbock. Their fans reminded me of that. Right? Too. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, the fans. But just the mentality of their team in general. We're going up there. We're highly ranked. They don't feel respected. This is their Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. That's how Colorado treated it. We, we, go, we went up to that game knowing we were a better team. Not taking them for granted. We treated it like but, we treat New Mexico, probably. But we – maybe more than that, but we did not match their intensity level. Like, you can go in there confident, not taking them for granted, but still not start the game with the same level of, as intensity as the other team that's treating you like their Super Bowl. Yeah. Because we, had, we were a 17-point favorite. We knew we were going to win the game just by showing up. That, that's the mentality is let's show up. Let's play good. Let's get out of here and go home. Mm -hmm. And Colorado's like, man, let's win this game and change this whole program right now. Yeah. It's a different mentality. <laughs> um, 
to me, that was the definition of a trap game. Oh, yeah. Going in, Big time. I, I, I called it that throughout the whole offseason. Then you have the whole altitude thing, and you have the – which, by the way, A&M handled that great. They took they over in the fourth quarter. It's just a mental thing. Yeah. To me, it affects you more in the first quarter and a half than it does. Does before. it really? Yeah. Okay. Wyoming was physical. Boulder was uh, – that's more mental. You can get over that. Okay. Or Denver or whatever. Um, yeah, and Denver's even less than Boulder a little bit. I yeah. guess they're about the same. Anyway – I thought it was a trap game. <clears throat> You're going into a trap game. Their their mentality, they were on tilt, just like these guys said. That was obvious from the beginning. I thought when you miss a field goal after an interception on the third play of the game, third play of their first possession, and you don't get any points, that kind of just yeah. added to the whole thing. Then your starting quarterback gets hurt. I'm telling you, David, in my opinion, most college football teams lose that game. Oh, yeah. In that scenario, most and I'm going to give you an example. Texas A&M ranked fourth, goes into Starkville, Mississippi. Mississippi State jumps up 14 nothing. Trevor Knight scores a touchdown. It's 14 seven. It's a struggle. Cal Bell's clanging. You can tell it's it's an 11 a.m. game. You could tell it's not A&M's day. You can tell they, they they didn't bring the same energy we'd been watching them play with when they beat Tennessee in overtime. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, then Trevor Knight gets hurt. And you look up, you know, a couple hours later, a couple quarters later, and Texas A&M's lost to Mississippi State. And I know, well, that's Mississippi State in Starkville. What are you talking about? Like, that Mississippi State team I put them finished up five. They, they won five <laughs> games because they beat A&M. Without beating the Aggies, that was a four-win Mississippi State team. No it was doubt. a bad team Very similar. that beat the Aggies up there that day. So this was a trap game, and when you lose your quarterback early in a trap game, I, I would be willing to bet that more often than not you lose that Listen, I promise game. you, dude, no I'm doubt. not some apologist sitting here, but when it went in that game the way we did, no matter what it took, was huge. Mm -hmm. We could put it behind us. And honestly, finish strong. Like nobody should be giving up not anything or changing expectations. I'm not. I think we still have a lot of momentum, a lot yeah. of hope for this season, and, and this going to be all right because of what we did last Saturday. And this week will tell us a lot of what we're going to see the rest of the season. We'll yeah. see against New Mexico on Saturday. Is this going to be an offense that can carry this team? Because we know we got a championship defense. Right. We know we should be able to run the football. Can we pass the football with efficiency? Because so far to this point, Zach Calzada has shown that he has a big league arm. And when he wants to be on the money, he is. But he's still a 50% passer to this right. point. By the way, we figured out we got a punter, too. <laughs> he yes, did a we great do. job. Yeah, he just flipped the field. And he actually impacted that. He, he impacted that game. He I mean, did. He had an impact. You got a game. bad punter. That game's completely different, dude. That's true, because you were hanging on by a thread, and, and even field goals would have changed. Even a field goal there changes that thing dramatically yeah, yeah. for Colorado, because then they're playing with at least the comfort of knowing, hey, at worst, they're going to tie us here. All right, let's hit a break here. We'll come back with more. Got the sleeper of the week and the freak of the week. We'll have that plus some uh, text messages on the A and B text line right now. A moment for my friends, Dr. Elms and Dr. Stewart at Elms Orthodontics. Uh, if you guys want to smile like Seth and Steve have, you might have to get it fixed, guys. I'm just going to tell you, some of your grills need to be worked on, and that's what they do there at Dr. Elms Orthodontics. They do such a great job. It can be braces. It can be Invisalign. It could just be some counseling. Whatever it may be, you want to go to those guys to get it done. Dr. Troy Elms, class of 86. He's an Aggie. He's a mainstay in our community over 30 years. 16-time Best of the Brazos winner. You also have Dr. Jeremy Stewart, class of 03. He's on Tech Sags. He's a big fan of what we do, and we're a big fan of what they do as well. Get a free consultation today. 1501 Emerald Parkway and College Station. The phone number for Elms Orthodontics, 979-693-6300 or online at DrElms.com. I'm Chelsea Reber with your community calendar on The Zone. Get a free car seat inspection the morning of Saturday, September 25th at the Brazos Center parking lot. Appointments are required. Find the link on our community calendar at WTAW.com. The Brazos Valley Beekeepers Association invites you to their one-day bee school on Saturday, September 25th. Visit bvbeeks.org for more information. The Brazos Valley African American Museum announces the 500 Giving Campaign to raise funds for a museum director. Be one of the 500 by going online to bvaam.org. The Bryan High Fine Arts Department presents These Shining Lives. Performances run September 23rd through October 2nd. Purchase tickets online at bryanhightheater.ludis.com. 
your home for football with the Fightin' Texas Aggies, the Bryan Vikings, the Houston Texans. Plus Thursday, Sunday, and Monday night NFL from Westwood One is Sports Radio 1150 and 93.7 FM. I'm Tulsi Reber on The Zone. Maroon U is your ultimate stop for brand name apparel, gifts, and accessories for the entire family. From Columbia, 47 Brand, Yeti, Dooney and Burke, and Adidas. We're able to outfit you for every occasion. Visit Maroon U and our family of companies on Holloman Drive and College Station to shop the latest in brand name Aggie merchandise. Shop Maroon U today. Voted best in the Brazos, best gift shop since 2016. Maroon never looks so good with Maroon U. I'm Jared McLeod with The Sleep Station. Alicia and I have been telling you for years about the benefits of a new tempur mattress. But don't just take our word for it. Listen to our friend and Aggie tight end, Jalen Weidemeyer. If you feel as beat up at the end of the day as I do after a game, you need a tempur mattress from The Sleep Station. It alleviates my aches and pains, and I always wake up feeling refreshed. With interest-free financing, free same-day delivery, and two locations, you can purchase your tempur mattress today and sleep on it tonight. Aggie-owned and operated. Visit us at thesleepstation.com. Brian Broadcasting is your home for high school football. Brian High, A&M Consolidated, Rudder, and College Station High play on the Brian Broadcasting family of stations. No matter where you are, hear every play, every game, all season long. Thanks to Frost Bank, Ed Phillips Plumbing, Rapid Express Car Wash, and ASAP Equipment. To find out when and where to hear your favorite team, go to BrazosFootball.com. The best is yet to come in College Station. Floater for Spiller. Touchdown, Aggies! Head coach Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies are ready to rise to the top of the SEC. Tackled short. The Aggies defense does it again. Join us Saturday. The Aggies host the New Mexico Lobos. Our coverage begins at 10 a.m. on your home for Aggies football. The Texas A&M Sports Network. Listen to Aggie football on 1150 a.m. and 93.7 FM. Online at RadioAggieLand.com. Or, or tell your smart speaker to play Sony 1150. Tech Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. I see your text messages on the A&B text line. We'll get to that here in a moment. We also uh, will open up the BCSI hotline here momentarily. I do, we do need to get into the Freak of the Week and the Sleeper of the Week. But before that, I just want to ask the guys this question. At what point in the season, I asked OB earlier, but at what point in the season do we know who a and is? Does it take Arkansas? Does it even go deeper? Is it three weeks? Is it four weeks? At what point do you feel like you know your team? To me, I, I think you'll you'll figure out who you are next week against Arkansas pretty well. Obviously, there's there's more to be figured out, but you'll know who you are for the most part in, in that Arkansas I game. Would, I would agree somewhat. I think it pr- might be the Mississippi State game before we really know who we are because I know we can run, stop the defense, stop the run, I mean, on defense. But Mississippi State's going to throw it around more. And if we're able to stop the run against Arkansas and, and stop pass against – Mississippi State, I'm going to feel a lot more confident going into that Alabama game with who we are as a defense because I think we're elite. We've showed signs of it, but we have not. Uh, we haven't really gone up against a, a top flight passing attack yet. I wouldn't. I wouldn't categorize Kent mm-hmm. State as that just because we had so much more talent. But I think Mississippi State will give us a test, and if our secondary passes that one, I'm going to feel pretty good. Yeah, agree to disagree. I mean, think about Alabama, <laughs> Seth. You, if, you, <laughs> if you can't. If you can't score 40 points against Alabama, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, you're you gonna, know, probably not going to beat them. That's a different world. So I, really. I think I think you could knock that down to 30 in this 35 case. 35 maybe. Because if A&M is going to beat Bama right in, in three weeks with, with the way things are looking, that defense is going to have to play like some kind of heroic game. So I think you set that number at 30. Ooh, and I think 30 is low, bro. It is, but you. I think you I, have. That's to. what it takes. I, I think you have I mean, to be like that's got to be. How are you going to beat Bama? That's got to be a game where, where, even though it doesn't feel like they can do it today, where A and M runs the hell out of the football. Yeah. They extend to. drives. They don't give Bama many chances. They create a couple turnovers, and it's like a 30 to one to 28 type of game. I mean, I don't see like you said. There, I don't see this group going out and putting up 40. So no. you can't win that one. So you have to do everything you can to prevent that one from happening. Yeah. Obviously, we're not sitting here saying we expect that today, right, but no. for the next couple of weeks, no 
for the first couple of SEC games, Arkansas, Mississippi State, I think you, you, you have to look like Georgia. And you win it with actually dominant defense, yeah, like a indeed. brick frickin' wall you're yeah. trying to run against. And, and a lot of third and longs and let Elko dial things up and let Antonio Johnson and Damani and Leon and Jalen Jones make plays because of the pressure up front on an obvious yeah. passing Which downs. to a large extent is what we did And that's what you got to do. That's what, that's what they did a lot last year. It's what they did in the second half against Colorado. And I think you have to do that, but you have to combine it with the running game. So you McKinney yeah. brothers need to be blocking and not <laughs> whiffing. Yeah, that would help. So that if the O line the O line to me, David, in the next two weeks and yeah. three weeks, you know, in the next couple weeks, that has to be we can talk like yes, I want more open receivers. I think you're right. gonna see more you're of right. Demas this That's weekend. I, I think I wanna see things happening in the but it all boils down to can the Aggies run the football and can they shut down? And, you know, can they stay ahead of the chain? Behind, keep the def offense behind the chains. And I said, I mean, that's that's Jimbo's whole dream in life. So to to me, it seems <laughs> is to get to second and six situation. Yeah. Like if, he, if he's got second and six, like he's like done. I'm I'm, I'm going to figure this out. That's his whole goal in life. Mm -hmm. And when he's starting a drive, to me, on yeah. like each each first down is to get to second and six and figure it out and dial up something. At that point in time, yeah. And if he can do that, if we can provide that kind of you know, like protection, and we can run the ball, then then that'll give whoever's back there the. And I the know that's not need. what everybody wants to hear today because everyone wants to see more explosive and then you know. But, that's not who he is. It's well, not gonna it, happen. but but it can be, but it's not going to be with complete and total inexperience up front and mm, complete and total inexperience at yeah, quarterback. We're not ready My, for that. I mean, like. Yes, we can't be sitting here saying this in game seven, eight, nine this year. Well, they can't go score with Ole Miss because they're inexperienced. Well, you're 10 games, 11 yeah. games in it. But we, we have seen A&M play two games. Yeah. Now, by game four, they got to be a lot better. What is, that, what is that stat? I've heard some stat about a combined 100 starts on your offensive line or something like that is what's needed. And as you – obviously, as you progress, I mean, that's obviously five more starts per guy or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and that adds up. And it'll Kenyon's going to be, be the, the mother load of those. No I mean, the thing I love about Jimbo, honestly, the way he calls games is mm -hmm. he, calls them, he calls them as a head coach, not just as an offensive coordinator. You know, his whole goal is to get into the fourth quarter, either tied or ahead, and win the football game. Right. He's not worried about <laughs> winning games in the first half and holding on to leads. That's not how he calls football games. He is very methodical about moving the ball down, eating up clock, getting points, whether right. it's field goals, touchdowns. And it works, obviously. And it's very effective, and he wears teams down, and he breaks their will in the fourth quarter, and he's been doing it for yeah. years. And that's people, why people, I, people don't like to see it, but, but think... winning is what people want to see. Yeah. But that's what Jimbo does, and that's how he wins football games. And it is a method to win football. It's proven in the past – and it's proven today that you can win football games that way. And do people, are people excited about that? No. But do, are they excited about winning? Yes. They've won 10 in exactly. a row. Exactly. If they can push that to 13 in a row, that means they'd beat New Mexico, Arkansas, Mississippi State. That will mean they find a way. I don't think it's going to be via explosive big monster play. I'm not saying there won't be any, but it is going to be because, like Steve said, Jimbo knows how to win those football games. He did it at Florida State. He had – uh, Sean McGuire fill in for Jameis Winston and beat Clemson when they had to mm -hmm. and keep their playoff hopes alive. He had to fill in for the Heisman Trophy winner. They went and beat Clemson. You look at A&M. How many times in, in four years A&M has ground one out? They've had to go grind it out. I think they've lost three of those type games in, in three years. All right, let's go lightning round real quick with the Freak of the Week and uh, Sleeper of the Week. It's Freak of the Week Energy Ogre. We can find you the cheapest electricity plant in your area. Manage all future contracts, saving you time and money. Go to energyogre.com and enter the code HOWDY for a free month of service. That's energyogre.com to start saving today. We'll begin with Seth, your Freak of the Week. I'm going to go with the, the guy that was the, the show. SEC the lineman of the week sports last week, Jaden Peavy. I'm, I think that he's going to go out and just dominate this, this you know, what seems to be weak New Mexico offensive line, and I can't wait to see it. It's going to be fun. He had a great game last week, him and uh, DeMarvin, and it's going to be 
another def- a dominant defensive performance. Yeah. Steve? I, I'm going to go with uh, – I'm going to pick Zach Calzada. Ooh. You know, I think that this is, this is setting up for him to really come out of his shell. He's been practicing with the ones all week. Reports, you know, from Lucci and Tex Ags are that they've had a great week of offensive practice. Which they have. And preparedness. Don't, don't report inaccurately. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, I think this will be a big week for Calzada. I think I, I would love to see 63% completion. completion. If I can see 63. What was it out of Haynes King the other week? Very 90. Happy. 90%. Absurd. <laughs> what is going on? I'm hearing commercials in the background. Let's go to you, Billy. What is your freaking second <laughs> time in the segment? That's too much to ask, your Billy. Freak of the week. Sorry. My freak of the week is going to be... I'm going to go with... On, on defense, I'm going Michael Clemens. I think he's just going to just destroy. New Mexico's tackles are going 6-2. Six, <laughs> six, Six three ah. two eighty nine and yeah. six oh, two no. two eighty three. That's not good. Those are their two tackles. Good luck with that. Um, I think Michael good. Clemens is going to just bull- play some bully ball on Saturday. Same with Peavy. I like Clemens on defense and on offense. I'm actually going. I'm going to go Devon A. Chain. I think this is one of those. Uh, yeah. It'll be a quick game Reggie for him. Bush type <laughs> of games. Like one of those. Like holy cow! Like a couple yeah. of these plays that are highlight reel everywhere. Time for the Sleeper of the Week presented by The Sleep Station. Go see Jerry McLeod and ask him about the Tempur-Pedic mattress in the Specs parking lot at Texas and Harvey and in front of the Lowe's at William D. Fitch and Highway 6. The website is The Sleep Station. We go to Steve first. Who is your sleeper, my friend? Uh, let me think about that. Uh, Seth. Seth, you want to go? Why don't you go ahead, Seth? <laughs> I'm going to go with Demas, man. I think it's, it's time for him to open up. And like you said, it's going to take Calzada having a good game and and everybody wants to see it. I know he's like a fan favorite that's been in the wings waiting. But I think he's going to have a good opportunity to go out and um, show it. I thought, you know, I, at least that he got open a few times against Colorado. I mean, I wasn't watching the film like you did, Steve, four to five times. But, well, but the time that I saw it, radio it did look good. It Josh did, Hypo it did look good. good plays. <laughs> open. Yeah. I'm going to go with him. Very hypolesque. I think Demas, by the way, going back to – you know, what people actually pay us for is insight into the program. And Demas had – he actually had a really good week of practice. And, you know, we're to Friday now. So, you know, as long as he shows up for the walkthrough and is ready to roll tomorrow, I think you'll mm. see – I think you'll see a lot more, number one. And I hope so. Again, he's got to go out there and perform. Everybody acts like it's just – there's like they're just purposely not playing, but but he has. He, you got to earn your reps. He had a good week practice. of practice. He's been his little, you know, quietly his playing time. He's been out there getting his feet wet. He hadn't been targeted yet, Nuno, which is wild that you can play as much as he has. But mm-hmm. I think this week you see it happen. All right. well, that'd be nice. I hope I hope so. Uh, my sleeper is going to be. Oh my God. Yeah. See. That is a tough one. You guys have picked. A, well, you, did you even pick anyone? Oh, you picked Achain. Yeah. No, I didn't. Go Who's ahead. Hurry up. We gotta go. <laughs> pick a sleeper. Right, me, I'll take. I'm gonna take uh, Bryce Foster. Oh, okay. You right. know, bounce like back it. game. I think. I think he's gonna bounce back. It's not like he played bad last week, mm-hmm. but I think this week you're gonna see some serious dominating in the middle. I guarantee you that O line didn't like what they saw on film, and they're they're gonna come out with a little more pride. I'm gonna go Edger and Cooper and linebacker making a couple plays defensively. He's you know you. Playing a lot now as a second-year guy. Hadn't, we hadn't seen a major impact from him, but I think it's coming. I think a couple plays by number 45 on defense. All right. By the way, our Aggieland Outfitters Big Friday giveaway winner is J. Pat Hanna, class of 68. Appreciate that. When we come back, we'll do we'll start our pick six, and we also got some A and B text line to get into. It is Tex Ags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. For sports. 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Let's go to Double Dave's. Your choices have expanded at Double Dave's, including the choice to eat in their dining room. You can also choose daily lunch specials like pepperoni rolls for $1.50, a $4 garden salad, and your choice of sandwiches, medium stromboli, or small two-topping pizza for just $6. Let's go to Double Dave's, Double Dave's. They'll keep you hopping for the pizza with the toppings that can't be beat. 
Specialty pizzas are eight bucks. Add a drink for a dollar or get a medium pizza of the month for just ten dollars. Click doubledaves.com to order carry out curbside pickup or delivery, including contactless delivery. Let's go to Double Dave's, Double Dave's. They've got the pizza with that fresh made taste to put a smile on your face. Question Would you pick a chain barbecue place over a hometown joint? Do you root for East Coast universities instead of the local team? Nah, then why choose a big Wall Street bank? A and B started in 1892. Five generations later, we're still owned and operated by the same Texas family. We support this community. We value your privacy. We make quick decisions, and we hate red tape. We answer to you, not Wall Street. Bank with A&B. Family owned, Texas proud. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Bellucci Hour Happy Hour is a must part of any Aggie football season. Join Billy Lucci of Tex Ags and Zach Taylor, the Infomaniac, every Monday and Thursday at 6 at the tap. Or listen in right here on Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. The Blue Chi Hour Happy Hour every Monday, Thursday at 6 is brought to you by King Ranch Saddle Shop. Also brought to you in part by B&B Automotive. It's the Blue Chi Hour Happy Hour. Suck it up. It's not a big deal. Sniff out. Just get over it. We've all heard it. But if you're experiencing extreme stress, it's not just in your head. It can affect your entire body because toxic stress can hurt us physically without us even knowing it. If you've lost a job, worry about your next meal, or have trouble making it through the day, if you're feeling the effects of stress, we can help. Text STRESS to 211-211 to find a solution. Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Max Kellerman. It feels like Aaron Rodgers is set up to fail here. He's kind of set himself up that way. It feels like if he doesn't get back to MVP caliber or if he doesn't get them back to the NFC Championship game, how will you look at Aaron Rodgers? How will you look at this team? Even if his numbers are decent, his numbers are decent, you're like, okay, but it wasn't enough. It does feel like championship or bust. Spend your mornings with Keyshawn, Jay Will, and Max, powered by WC Tractor. Mornings from 5 to 8 here on The Zone. All right, guys, it's time to end the day with Double Dave's. Caller number 12 at 979-693-1150. We're going to hook you up with your choice of a medium pizza or a half dozen pepperoni rolls from Double Dave's, serving Aggie Land since 1984. You can order online at DoubleDave's.com for curbside pickup or free delivery. Keep going. (laughs) Keep it going. I don't know the rest of it. Hey, it's uh, Tech Act Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. We need to start our pick six. We'll do the rest of them on our after party. But uh, I do want to ask you this question on the A&B text line. This comes in. How do you guys anticipate the running game looking against uh, Rocky Long's 335? And how would you attack the bare front if we see the same thing uh, Colorado ran? The Rocky Long three three four. Rocky Long, long time head coach, mm-hmm. New Mexico and and San Diego State, very well respected. Where was he? Where was coach. he at? Like when we played in college? Because I know I played his defense. I UCLA remember. maybe? Was he at Southern Miss ever? No, I don't know. No, I know what hmm. you're talking about. I mean, the the, the challenge with a three three five type defense for an offensive line is there's a lot of movement. You know, it it's gonna be not looking clean sometimes, but then you will. Occasionally hit a big one, right? And, you know, with a team like New Mexico, I anticipate we'll be so much bigger and stronger right. than them that we're going to get some big push up front. If not in the beginning, eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to come. So we, but, we talked about this. But there could be some looks that are not real clean. Right. We talked about this the, the first game and about zone football, right? So I, I expect us to run a lot of zones. If, if that's what they're doing, that's what I'd expect is to run a lot of zones at the beginning. And, you just stay on your track, and your guy's going to run to you. And then as the game gets going, you can get, you know, cuter with your calls or whatnot, run a few powers and stuff. Yeah. I know, you know, some of these zone zone reads where they, you know, let guys go free and double team down to air <laughs> on a 3-3. Like, I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah. How do you run a zone read against a 3-3 and you just let the end go and go block a linebacker? You know, I don't know. It It, it feels like they're playing some really – in the first three weeks here, some tr- really tricked up, high-risk, right? <laughs> high-reward kind of defenses that just kind of yeah. like, hey, if you're going to 
I, I, it'll be nice to see them play some more conventional, but the, the interesting thing is they might not do that until they play like Bama. Yeah. Barry Odom is going to be a really tough test. So I yeah, like yeah. the idea of New Mexico Nuno having to make these linemen and this quarterback think a lot. Yeah. It's a, it's a good test. Yeah. I mean, you, and you'd rather it be that without the overwhelming talent. Yes, absolutely. And now next week, not that Arkansas's talent's overwhelming, but Arkansas has some really good defensive players and – Barry Odom's going to make Zach and those old lines. I know saw against play, Texas, it's an SEC team. So. And they play a similar – I don't know if they'll play that look against us, but I mean, they played a lot of three-down odd looks against Texas almost the whole game. It's funny, and they don't typically do that, and they I did it against so. Texas. So, it, yeah. Odom's damn good. There's no question. And Rocky Long's damn good. So, this will be a good test for, from the mental side of things. All right, guys, it's time for the pick six. We're going to do one here, and then we'll do the remainder of them on the after party. We uh, do the first game, obviously, A&M. Two and zero, New Mexico visiting number five Texas A&M. Eleven a.m. kickoff at Kyle Field on the SEC Network, gentlemen. The uh, A&M is favored by twenty eight and a half. We'll start off with Steve. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick A&M to cover. I mean, I don't see them scoring more than ten points, and I feel like we're gonna be in the forties. So I got to go with the cover on this one. Seth, that's my assessment. I think that uh, Calzado will have a pretty good game, and I think A-Chain will go out and just have a ridiculous game. So, we'll easily cover. Billy. I don't think that uh, that you'll easily cover this one. I, I'm actually going to go with New Mexico covering slightly, just like I did with Kent State. I think it's a four-touchdown A&M win. I think Which they you were wrong about. I know. I was wrong. Barely. Because, yeah. <laughs> Barely sure wrong. I had two chances in the last five minutes. But I think a slight. I haven't picked A&M to cover yet. I think the spreads have been too – they're too big. They're going off of, like, last year's A&M versus that this team should just be playing a lot better football as we go on, and I don't think they're there yet. I think they win comfortably, but I don't think they get – I think it's under four – score. I think it's four scores and not five, and that's what they're saying. It's going to be five scores. Oh, Abraham Lincoln. I'm going to give you guys – Ten seconds each to close up as we got about a minute left on the show. Uh, any that would parting only be shots? Thirty seconds. Parting shot. Yeah, then I Cal- give me thirty. Calzada's going to have a good game. He's going to throw three touchdowns. Oh, I like that. I think the offensive line is going to look a lot cleaner and crisper, and get some good movement. I think we'll run the ball in the middle better than we did last week for sure. I think the defense forces three turnovers. Agree with uh, actually both of you guys. I think the offense gets it going. I actually think they have more success than people are expecting through the air this week. I think A&M slings it around a little bit. I'd right. love to see it. That does it for Texas Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. As a reminder, we'll have the uh, Luchador Show. Oh, also, we've got uh, Bronny doing the in-game watch. Go to TexasAgs.com, and on our YouTube page, you can watch that. Can we I get... Can imagine nothing more. Are you serious? <laughs> in-game with Bronny. It's his idea. Make us a bunch of money, so we'll see. Watch it with Bronny, then the postgame show I'll with me. I'll just sit back and get rich. Yeah, let's get rich. All right, that's Tex Ags Radio. We'll see you guys next week. This is your home for Tex Ags Radio. Radio. Louis 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 Louis